he put his hand on his shoulder and enthusiastically told him that although this otherworldly boarding house was dangerous, part-time work was definitely a good opportunity for them, and if everything went well today, he might not have to go out tomorrow. Avon became motivated and clenched his fists, shouting that he understood everything. They entered the bloody elevator together, and nothing was left of Avon's motivation. Huan Dao hugged him with a relaxed face and advised him not to worry so much, because he would cover for him. He pressed the button for the 32nd floor. At this time, Ling Yui was gambling. He threw his cards forward. Ling Yui smiled contentedly, closing his eyes, and said that he had lost. The red ghost with the big head said that it was such a small card and asked if he really didn't raise the bet all the way. A blue ghost with a long, rectangular face said that this was the first time he had seen gambling on a large scale in all the time he had been in the otherworldly boarding house. Ling Yui looked at these ghosts with a smile on his face and thought that these gamblers were really well informed. According to them, the background of the boarding house, the Eldritch Council, is also a famous organization in the ghost world. He picked up the chip and thought about the fact that there are only 13 members on the council and three of them are here today, so they take Ling Yui seriously. But the board members don't matter to him. He must find a way to spend more money tonight. He threw the chip on the table under the shocked look of the ghost. Both players began to greedily grab chips from the table. Ling Yui stood up and said it was time to go have dinner. The dealer girl asked him to take care of himself and said that they would play poker with him next time. The elevator went up to the 32nd floor. The restaurant with a panoramic view looked very rich and elegant. The ghost was eating a steak. Avan and Quan Dao were dressed in waiter uniforms and stood near the window with the rest of the employees, awaiting orders. Avan was very worried. He looked at the visitors and thought that they were all evil and stern ghosts, and fortunately there weren't many customers here, but he still didn't know if he could survive this evening. The elderly ghost rudely called Avan over. The guy tensed and was confused. A ghost in an expensive suit tapped his nails on the glass and ordered him to pour wine. Avan hesitantly approached him and picked up a bottle of wine. He opened it and began to pour it into the sides. The ghost turned to him and with a frightening face asked if he was human. This question made the guy start to worry, and he immediately began to tremble, trying to answer the visitor something clearly. The ghost looked up at him, still tapping his glass, and asked why he then felt that the guy smelled as fresh as his steak. Avan's face immediately changed. He looked very scared. A green snake came out of a bottle of wine and began hissing at him. The snake approached the alarmed guy's face and seemed to be trying to bite him. Out of fear and surprise, the guy dropped a bottle of wine. She began to fall down. Drops of wine splashed everywhere. The ghost watched with interest and waited to see what would happen next. Suddenly Quan Dao quickly ran up and deftly caught the bottle before it fell. He smiled awkwardly and apologized to the guest, saying that his colleague was a little clumsy. He quickly began to wipe up the wine that had spilled on the table with a rack. Avan was still frightened. But after a second he calmed down and realized that he had succumbed to an illusion, and there was no snake. The ghost sighed tiredly. The guy hid behind Quan Dao and thought that if he got his clothes dirty, the ghost could take advantage of the situation and simply eat him. He was glad that Quan Dao saved him. The ghost angrily pointed his finger at them and said that the guy owes compensation for spilling his wine, because this bottle costs a lot of money. He stuck out his tongue disgustingly and added that he wanted his thigh as compensation. Avan helplessly grabbed his face and began to cry, not knowing what to do next. Quan Dao bowed to the guest and replied with a bashful smile that they would compensate for this bottle of wine, but they would have to follow the owner's rules. The ghost turned around displeased. He understood that the restaurant owner was not easy to deal with, but he still called out to him and asked him to come over. The restaurant owner looked almost identical to his brother from the high-end store. Suddenly the ghost noticed something. The owner warmly greeted Ling Yui and Bai Zhu who had just entered the restaurant. The owner, with a friendly smile, addressed Ling Yui as a distinguished guest and told him that he had heard about him from his cousin. He said he was very pleased to see him here today with the members of the council. Bai Zhu bowed respectfully and said that the council members would arrive soon, and asked Ling Yui to follow her to the Red Moon Hall. Ling Yui agreed with her, but then he saw Quan Dao and Avin shocked and was surprised himself. Now he understood where they were working. Both of their jaws dropped and Avan tried to ask Quan Dao in a trembling voice if it was really Ling Yui who had come. Ling Yui drew attention to the dissatisfied ghost sitting at the table, which was served by the guys. He realized they were in trouble. Ling Yui looked at them and asked what happened there. The owner looked at him in confusion and replied that something unexpected might have happened there, and he would go and sort it out. Ling Yui overtook him and said that he would go with him and they would watch together. The dissatisfied guest pointed to Avan and scolded him, saying that he could not even hold the bottle with his hand or foot, 
and he was of no use, after which he asked why not give it to him to eat. The owner looked at the guest and wanted to say something about him, but he was interrupted by Ling Yui, who firmly asked how much the bottle cost and said that he could pay. The ghost looked at him with contempt and said that he didn't even have a second rank and didn't deserve to talk to him. Ling Yui pointed his finger at him with a calm face and asked the owner if such an unqualified client could dine in the restaurant. The owner looked at him embarrassed, and the guest was terribly angry. Ling Yui pointed to the bottle and asked how much his wine cost. The owner replied that red wine was made from shade vine grapes, costing 600 ritual money per bottle. The guest looked at the guy angrily and insultingly asked if this poor guy could pay for the bottle. The guy took out his gold card and ordered 10 bottles. The ghost was taken aback by this statement. The restaurant owner tried to block Ling Yui's path, saying that there was no need to rush to pay, and he would serve him first. The dissatisfied ghost, hearing this, wondered why the restaurant owner knew him. He narrowed his eyes and tensed. A ghostly waiter rolled out ten bottles of wine on a cart. Bai Zhu and the owner looked at him in surprise. The guest put his hands on his hips and said that paying him with ten bottles was very sincere, and he would spare the guys for his sake. Ling Yui grabbed one of the bottles and said that he thought too much of himself. With a straight face, he swung a bottle of wine and then smashed it on the guest's head. All the contents spilled onto his face and clothes. Everyone who was next to them was in complete shock. Avon was horrified. He covered his mouth with his hand and could not believe that he had just dared to hit the stern ghost. Quan Dao began praising and cheering him on, raising his fist in the air. He said he didn't know he was a VIP guest at the revolving restaurant. Ling Yui had a smug grin on her face. Bai Zhu and the owner were confused and shocked by his action. Wine was dripping down the guest's face and fragments of the bottle were falling off him. He was beside himself with rage, so he aggressively attacked the guy. However, Ling Yui remained calm and used his headband. She began to curl around the ghost, lifting him up. This was observed by Bai Zhu and the owner. Ling Yui, with a calm face, pulled the bandage, and it completely engulfed the ghost's body, preventing him from moving. Three gold-colored screws flew out from under his sleeves, surrounded by a green aura. They flew straight to the neck of the insolent guest. They nailed him to a chair. The screws went through his body and the back of the chair. Ling Yui removed the bandage, but the guest still screamed in pain and shook in horror. Ling Yui grabbed another bottle of wine and shouted that he deserved to die. He swung it with all his might, saying that a bottle of wine costs 600. The guy with a distraught face hit the ghost on the head with it, shouting that he was treating him. The impact left a dent in the ghost's skull. The owner, both politely and fearfully, handed him a napkin and offered to wipe his hands. Avin and Quan Dao couldn't believe what was happening. While Ling Yui was wiping his hands of wine, he suggested that the guys try it too. The guys looked at each other, grinning. They immediately took two bottles of wine and began to brutally hit the ghost on the head with them. He was already exhausted and begged for mercy. There were many dents on his head from the blows, and there were bottle shards everywhere. Ling Yui took a step forward and walked towards him. His eyes began to glow purple and he pointed his hand at the ghost. He said that he would give him a quick death. A moment later, the screws passed through his body, flying out from the other side. Huan Dao raised his fist with a smile on his face and shouted that this ghost was a reptile and thanked Ling Yui, calling him an ancestor. Avan put his palms together and shouted that he would never forget his kindness and would look up to him. Ling Yui embarrassedly said that he was not an ancestor, but Quan Dao immediately shouted joyfully and said that he understood everything. The guy wanted to keep a low profile, and Quan Dao promised to keep his secret when he came out. Avan supported him, saying that he is also very secretive. Ling Yui decided not to tell them anything. He looked slightly confused and thought that it was not really possible to explain it anyway. Ling Yui awkwardly spread his hands and apologized for killing the owner in the establishment. The owner himself and Bai Zhu were looking at him. The owner smiled at him, although he was clearly tense, and replied that such a low-ranking guest was not worth his apology, and Ling Yui did him a favor. Inside himself, he thought that this guy was not just rich, as his cousin said, he was a man with a strong hand. He was sweating from exertion. Bai Zhu looked at him in surprise, covering her mouth with her hand, and thought that Ling Yui did not use his spiritual power but at the same time wielded two yin artifacts, and he was probably hiding his power. She looked the guy up and down again and realized that the rules of the ghost world prohibit ghost lords from entering here with such force, and the conclusion of the fifth advisor was indeed correct. She claimed that he was a high-level ghost. Ling Yui's eyes glowed purple again and he looked at his palm with a smirk. Bai Zhu bowed and pointed to the hall, saying that Mr. Ling Yui worked hard, so he should eat more. He headed towards the hall. She and Baiju were sitting in a private room at a large round table. 
Lang Yui looked at the menu and named the prices from there. He closed it and put it on the table, saying that these dishes and drinks were a little out of keeping with the status of a council member, and asked if there was anything with a higher price, like a set menu or something similar. He added that spending less than 100000 is not very prestigious. The owner frowned and replied that he was right and the menu was indeed unsuitable, but the restaurant could come up with a new one. Ling Yui thought that the old dog could be taught new tricks. The owner handed him another menu and asked him to look at these combinations of dishes. He was about to offer him a discount, but Ling Yui coughed displeasedly, hinting that he did not need discounts. The owner immediately understood everything and with a furious face shouted that there were no discounts. He offered him a table of 18 dishes costing 108,888 yuan. This answer satisfied Ling Yui and he agreed with a grin. He raised his finger up with an important face and asked about drinks. He asked if they had the restaurant's signature drinks or century-old wines. The guy said that he needed the most expensive variety. The owner thought, looking away to the side. He confidently pointed at the waiter, who brought out a huge barrel, and shouted that the best wine he had here was the wedding wine, which was originally intended for his mediocre brother, and since Ling Yui wanted it so much, he would give it to him, and name the cost at 100,000. Ling Yui smiled enthusiastically and said that he was fine with that. Holding out his card, a system window appeared above his head, indicating that he had successfully completed his task. The owner took his card and thanked him. Several new system windows have appeared. A new task has already started. Task 4, more money, more show. Unfinished. Quest, make one purchase worth over a million with over 100 spectators, 1 out of 11 completed. Quest reward, Xu and Ian Iron Essence and Spiritual Gold Wire. Ling Yui read everything carefully while sitting at the table. He smiled in confusion, because the tasks were becoming more difficult. Not only to spend a million, but also to have 100 people gathered around. Ling Yui was such an introvert that even the system forces him to play in front of everyone. Bai Zhu approached him with a blush on her face, holding a teapot in her hands. Ling Yui paused from his thoughts and turned his attention to her. She smiled at him in a friendly and sincere way. The girl started pouring tea into his cup while Ling Yui looked on. Bai Zhu thought that the dinner cost 200,000 yuan, and this guy must have a monstrous past. The door to the room began to open. In the aisle stood two tall advisors in brown robes, and next to them walked an advisor in a red robe. Bai Zhu ran up to them and bowed, greeting everyone who arrived, from the fifth venerable counselor to the ninth and thirteenth counselor. Ling Yui stood up from the table looking at them. One of the advisors pulled up a chair for the fifth advisor, inviting her to sit down. Ling Yui stood opposite them and thought that the ninth and thirteenth were both stronger than the female secretary at the level of the stern ghost. He looked at the fifth advisor who was smiling and thought that she belonged to the same class of ferocious ghosts as Zhu Jiang. Ling Yui greeted the council members while looking at them. One of them asked him if he was a VIP guest from room 2643. Ling Yui answered in the affirmative and said that they could call him Fengdu Emperor. They were amazed by this, thinking how absurd the name was. Ling Yui sat down at the table and took the cup in his hands. He asked if the members were really going to dine dressed like that. The fifth advisor agreed with him and said that they would no longer hide, since the guy was so sincere. She began to remove the hood from her head. Ling Yui was surprised by her appearance. Bai Zhu told him that it was a girl and he remembered this while looking at the advisor. She looked like a teenager. She had blonde hair with curls tied in two ponytails and yellow eyes. She wore a skull ornament on her forehead. The other two counselors also removed their hoods. The first was a man with red eyes and a bald spot on the top of his head, and the second was a man with short dark hair, blue eyes and a cross-shaped scar all over his face. Bai Zhu bent down to the fifth advisor and began to whisper something in her ear. Ling Yui assumed that she was reporting what he had just done in the restaurant. She doesn't dare take him lightly after what he did. The advisor's face became very surprised. She thought that by killing ghosts in a second and throwing hundreds of thousands of money, this guy is definitely not a human ghost lord. He is an expert from the inner circle of the ghost world under the command of some ghost king. All three advisors looked at each other. The fifth advisor thought that they, the other world council, were also connected to the great forces controlled by the ghost king, and she decided that Ling Yui wanted to cooperate with them. She extended her hand to him and told him that the power of the ghost king behind him asked him to come here, so he studied the influence of their otherworldly council on the boarding house. She asked if he wanted to work very closely with them. Ling Yui nodded at her, thinking about what a brilliant mind this little girl had. She blushed and giggled, saying that then they would get straight to the point. She admitted that his strength and financial resources are strong, 
and the methods he has are insidious and mysterious, which also fascinates them a lot. The girl said that they needed time for internal negotiations, so they could start with small-scale cooperation. The other advisors nodded approvingly. Ling Yui also nodded, saying that this was exactly what he was thinking about. He smiled and asked what they could offer them and what he should offer in return. The girl clenched her fist and replied that His Excellency had chosen the council because of their intelligence capabilities and outer strongholds and the income from ritual money. The work of other organizations, the activities of human hunters, all this is under their control. Ling Yui realized that the otherworldly boarding house operated on a system that was clearly designed to make money, and as for the information, there were so many different people in such a large boarding house, so it was only natural that they could not hide from the boarding house's eyes. He snapped his fingers and replied that he was not very interested in money, but information was extremely important to them. He grinned and asked if underdogs were getting more interesting these days. This phrase seemed to dawn on the fifth advisor, and she realized that he was here for this. The other advisor next to him kept a sullen, serious face. The girl looked down and replied that although they had nothing to lose by sharing information with His Excellency, there were many restrictions associated with the fact that they were in another country. Ling Yui clasped his hands together and proudly declared that he would be there for them in their time of need. Hearing this, the fifth advisor exhaled in relaxation. She smiled brightly and said that with these words from His Excellency, they felt relieved. This reaction puzzled Ling Yui. He asked himself if ghosts really trusted each other so much, and if this was due to the influence of the rules of the ghost world on them. The fifth advisor made a gesture with her hands, which Bai Zhu immediately understood. She started walking towards Ling Yui. The girl handed him something and asked him to accept it. In her hand was a red square badge with a skull. Ling Yui accepted it. The fifth counselor said that this was the badge of their council. With this badge, all of their properties and branches will be in Ling Yui's location. From today he is an honorary member of the council. The guy proudly pinned the badge on his chest. A huge number of waiters entered the room, carrying a variety of dishes and wine. They wished the guests bon appetit. The waiter poured wine into glasses. Ling Yui stood up, raised his glass in the air and wished them fruitful cooperation. The advisors also stood up and raised their glasses, wishing this in return. Ling Yui turned to Bai Zhu and asked the fifth counselor if he should be given a way to communicate with her since he was an honorary council member. Bai Zhu looked down in embarrassment. The fifth advisor drew attention to this. She winked at him while holding her glass and said that he has a good eye and Bai Zhu is really good at all things. Ling Yui was again misunderstood, because he was referring to obtaining a jade pendant, which was an alternative to a telephone in the ghost world. He tried to object, but the girl continued her speech, saying that since Ling Yui was new to this matter and did not have a competent assistant, she would allow Bai Zhu to follow him and let her be responsible for helping him communicate with the council. Ling Yui became embarrassed and worried. He just wanted the jade pendant, but it was time for him to forget about it. He decided to just do the other side of the table a favor. The girl stood up and assumed that he had a contract. Ling Yui answered in the affirmative and a contract appeared in his hands. Bai Zhu licked her index finger and then left her imprint on the contract. A bright warm light came from the place of contact. Ling Yui extended his hand to Bai Zhu and said that she would follow him from now on. The girl bowed and handed over the contract of voluntary service of Bai Zhu to Mr. Ling Yui. A red moon appeared in the sky, illuminating the building. All the advisors were already preparing to leave. The fifth advisor turned to Ling Yui as an honorary advisor and said that they would leave everything as it was, if he needed anything. He could just ask. Ling Yui folded his hands as a sign of respect and replied that if they encountered difficulties, they could also turn to him. But he himself thought that the right to help or not would still remain in his own hands. The advisors left the room. The girl sighed and said that their actions were becoming more and more brazen, and it was inevitable that they would be spied on by internal forces. The bald-headed advisor told her that he did not understand, because the cost of the entire boarding house was only a few tens of millions, and asked how it was possible to attract someone so important. The girl bit her thumb and replied that she was in the inner part, where the rules and restrictions are much worse than in the outer areas, and recently, thanks to the game, not only more people began to see the other side but also mastered the method of re-entering the world of people. She suggested that this is why they focus their attention on their organization. The advisors were heading somewhere. At this time, Ling Yui arrived at his room. Bai Zhu brought him a cup of tea. A system window appears. Contract, Bai Zhu. Level, Severe Ghost. Spiritual Awareness, 720. Spiritual Power, 660. 
Yi an ancestral weapon, soul I, middle third category, skill, sorrow, Ling Yui carefully read its characteristics and realized that compared to Zhu Jiang, the Bai Zhu panel is slightly inferior. He looked at the girl thoughtfully and thought that for him, harsh ghosts were now more suitable for public use. He looked very calm. Bai Zhu had a knack for figuring out things that Ling Yui didn't understand, and with the contract concluded, Bai Zhu's loyalty to her would gradually surpass that of the council. The girl herself looked very pleased and thought that only by following Ling Yui would she be able to make the right choice. Ling Yui looked straight with a serious face and ordered his panel to be opened. A system window appears. Current level, rank 2 Ghost Lord. Spiritual Awareness, 74. Spiritual Power, 765. When you reach 1000 spiritual power, 100 spiritual awareness, you will ascend to rank 3 Ghost Lord. Ling Yui was surprised. He opened his mouth and raised his eyebrows when he realized that thanks to the feast worth 200,000 yuan, he had quietly moved up to the second rank, and even almost halfway moved up to the third. He clenched his hand into a fist with a smile on his face. The strength of a rank 2 Ghost Lord is much greater than before. He could easily destroy a ghost equal to himself. He was given rewards for simply completing a task. Talismans that looked like sheets appeared in his hands. Several system windows have appeared. A soul-capturing talisman. After breaking, it creates a huge traction force with an aura, breaks and destroys the target, and can cause serious damage to harsh ghosts. Soul Destruction Talisman. When broken, emits a powerful strong surge of spiritual energy that explodes and destroys the target, capable of causing heavy damage to harsh ghosts. He took both talismans in his hand and smiled, happy that the power of the ritual money had finally transformed into his own combat power. Day passed. Outside the window there was a view of a ghost world with a red moon. The otherworldly guesthouse quest was completed. There were three survivors. Zhu Jiang and Bai Zhu were standing in Ling Yui's room, holding bags from boutiques in their hands. Ling Yui looked at them. The environment has already begun to collapse. Everything around began to disintegrate into red fragments, signaling a return to the human world. Ling Yui returned from this quest with loot. He and his ghosts moved into reality together. Ling Yui and Bai Zhu stood in front of a luxurious cottage. The guy stood with his mouth open and told the girl that the day before yesterday he gave her 10 million, and asked if she took this house for only 3 million. Bai Zhu was holding a folder in her hands. She replied that his requirements were privacy, space and freedom from disturbance, so she scoured suburban properties and found this cottage. She turned to Ling Yui and smiled at him, blushing slightly. Bai Zhu said that the previous owner of this villa committed suicide, and it was rumored to be haunted, so the price was very low. She sighed in frustration and said that she took a closer look and in fact there were no ghosts. Ling Yui had a wide smile on her face. He thought that if there really was a ghost here, he could spend more money. Ling Yui turned to the girl, gave her a thumbs up and praised her, saying that she had done a great job. She became a little embarrassed and lowered her head, saying that it was all part of her job. She herself thought that the fifth advisor never praised her, although she treats her well. They headed to the front door of the house. Baiju reported that she also collected information about human ghost hunters and their games. She said that the third and final game that Ling Yui will participate in next is the final one for new players. Ling Yui said with a calm face that he had heard that you can add friends after the beginner stage. Who was following him, replied that in addition to this, players will be given full access to the thriller space. She looked at him a little sadly and added that this is why the difficulty of the third quest is not the same as the first two. The survival the survival rate of players does not even reach 30%. Ling Yui tensed, brow furrowed, and said that he would not take this matter so lightly. They still have more than a week, he suggested that she take a good rest. In the backyard of the house, he stood with his ghosts and said that at this time they would be his sparring partners. The barbell lay nearby. Zhu Jiang agreed to this. Zhu Jiang's blow caused Ling Yui's nose to bleed, and Bai Zhu was already running towards him with a first aid kit. Then, together with Bai Zhu, the two of them attacked Zhu Jiang. Ling Yui hit Zhu Jiang's ponytail with a self-tapping screw, and Bai Zhu encouraged him. On the calendar for June, he noted what skills they had managed to practice. Lightning thundered and glowed among the rocks. A train was riding on rails made of bones. The game greeted the players. The train rushed forward quickly. Name of the quest, train number 44. Objective of the task, arrive at the final destination by train. Current survivors, 15. Ling Yui teleported to one of the seats in the carriage. He covered his face with his hand. The train was full of ghosts, but there were people on it too. Ling Yui thought that as expected from the last rookie test, this time there are as many as 15 players. He wondered how many would survive this quest. 
The train driver greeted the passengers of train number 44 and asked them to behave well and follow the rules and regulations of behavior on the train. Ling Yui looked up from his thoughts and began to listen carefully. He smiled excitedly. He wondered how treacherous this quest could be. A flight attendant walked through the carriage, checking everyone's tickets. At this time, the driver began to dictate the rules. First, passengers must take their seats in accordance with their tickets. Secondly, in the carriage in front there are sleeping places, and you can purchase luxury tickets for this carriage. Third, it is prohibited to make noise or disturb other passengers. Disturbing passengers will be held responsible for the consequences. Fourth, you must get off the train at the station. Evading the purchase of tickets is strictly prohibited. Fifth, it is prohibited to use toilets during the stop, and the departure time will be late. Ling Yui took out his train ticket. He thought that even though there were only five rules, there could be no peace inside the train with so many different creatures. Ling Yui was distracted from his thoughts. Someone in the carriage shouted and asked whether the person understood the rules or not. The scream came from the male player. He had brown hair tied in a ponytail. He was wearing a white shirt, his tie loosened and tucked into his shirt pocket. He, sitting on the seat, turned away from the flight attendant. The flight attendant next to him was a huge ghost woman in a crimson jacket and skirt. The ghost sitting opposite Ling Yui also turned to them and muttered something displeased about ungrateful people. Ling Yui realized that this flight attendant was actually at the level of a stern ghost. He put his fist to his chin and thought that the players who survived to the third quest must have some experience, and wondered how they could get into an altercation with the stern ghost so quickly. The huge flight attendant with a creepy smile said that the instructions clearly stated that all passengers, whether human or ghost, must sit with a ticket. The man folded his hands on his chest in displeasure and asked what was wrong with it. He stood up from his seat and with an irritated face handed her a ticket, saying that he had a ticket, and asked why she decided that he did not have a ticket. She looked down at him creepily and replied that he had a ticket, but only for one passenger, and the ghost on his leg did not have a ticket. The man looked alarmed at his leg, from where a green ghostly foot could be seen. He realized that the flight attendant had noticed everything. Her gaze became angrier. She bared her sharp teeth and said that there were fines for violating train rules. The man immediately stopped being dissatisfied and reached into his pocket for something. He apologized and said he would just issue another ticket, asking how much it cost. The flight attendant took out a book and said that she would look at it now. She said with an ominous face that there were no extra train tickets. A pink aura appeared around her, throwing the man aside. He realized that she was a stern ghost. The woman grabbed the man by the leg and swung him. With a grin and white eyes, she shouted that passengers who did not buy a ticket would be expelled from the train. The man was very scared and tried to object to her, but nothing came of it. The ghost that replaced his leg was thrown out of the train window. The man began to scream shrilly in pain. The purple-haired girl turned pale in horror. The other human passenger also turned pale with fear and lowered his head. Ling Yui looked at them thoughtfully and realized that this was not bad for the third quest. And who would have thought that even ghosts fused with humans needed a ticket? In fact, this rule is a hidden trap. The flight attendant continued to check the passengers' tickets. Ling Yui looked at her and realized that he could not summon Zhu Jiang and Bai Zhu at will. It was not for nothing that he had mastered the use of power to fuel weapons in battle, so that he could deal with ordinary evil spirits. He began to think about the system, when suddenly he heard steps in his direction. The flight attendant extended her hand to him and informed him that the tickets were being checked. Ling Yui turned away from his thoughts and turned to her. He handed her his ticket and said that there were no regular tickets left and asked if there were more expensive tickets. She took his ticket in her hands and rudely replied that the seats for them, the poor freaks, were sold out. The woman gave him the ticket and said that one stop in a separate room costs at least a thousand ritual money and asked if he could afford it. Ling Yui sighed and looked at his ticket, thinking that there are no ghosts in this world who do not recognize money. The flight attendant thought in surprise how this man could be so calm. She said that in order to get an upgrade they had to move to car 5 when they arrived at the next station. Ling Yui put his ticket in his pocket and thanked her with a smile. The woman went to another carriage. Ling Yui followed her with his eyes. The red door to the other carriage slammed behind her. Two ghosts came into conflict. One of them took the other by the collar and shouted to him that he was putting pressure on him. In another part of the car, a pink ghost was telling someone to shut up. The man who had lost his ghost leg sat on the floor bandaging his stump. A tired and irritated ghost ran around the carriage and screamed about how tired he was of everything. The purple-haired girl was still shaking in fear. Someone asked in the carriage if anyone needed fresh blood. 
He was a big ghost in a t-shirt who was sitting next to his friends. He stood up from his seat and coughed, looking at the passengers. His pupil moved from side to side in search of victims. He pointed to the man without a leg who was struggling to hold on to the back of the seats, to the frightened purple-haired girl, and to Ling Yui, who was calm. He pointed his finger at them and with an unpleasant face ordered them to play cards with them. His friend started grinning. The ghost with a ponytail on his head began to encourage them to play cards. The ghost with the horn on his forehead said that if they refused, then they should not show themselves to them again. The man, the girl and Ling Yui walked towards the ghosts. The short ghost passenger shouted in fear that these people were under threat of attack by three evil ghosts. Ling Yui put his hands in his pockets and smiled as he walked towards them. He thought about how these were three little evil ghosts and wondered if they really dared to take the initiative to provoke the guy. He approached them and asked how much one batch cost. The man and girl were already sitting opposite these evil ghosts. Their leader, a ghost with red hair, answered with a grin on his face that one game costs ten ritual money, and they will play until everyone is having fun. He added that if they don't have money, they can use weapons, materials, flesh and souls to pay off their debts. Ling Yui sat down opposite him and chuckled. With a smile on his face, he suggested we start. Such calmness caused the ghosts to become irritated. They considered him arrogant. A ghost with red hair began to shuffle the deck of cards. He said that the guy is very confident in his poker skills, he already likes it. The girl and the man were shaking with fear and were very pale. They didn't say anything, so the ghosts asked them why they were so afraid, because if they won, they could take their money, they should look forward to that. People turned their heads towards Ling Yui. They looked very worried, but the guy, on the contrary, showed no signs of fear. They mentally wondered why he was so calm. All the ghosts and people were ready, the leader continued to shuffle the deck of cards. He loudly placed it on the table. After this, the deck of cards itself began to distribute cards to all players. Ling Yui deftly caught his three cards. In his hands were two of hearts, five of spades and six of clubs. He looked at the other people. The girl was terribly scared when she looked at the cards, and the man, on the contrary, smiled. Ling Yui realized that the man was luckier than the girl. He turned his gaze to the ghosts. Their faces were very pleased, as if they were confident in their victory. The red-haired ghost, holding his cards in front of his face, ordered everyone to reveal their cards. Ling Yui showed his cards with a calm face, just like everyone else. The girl had two of diamonds, three of diamonds and five of clubs. The man wears the king of clubs, the king of spades and the ace of diamonds. The ghosts had not yet revealed all the cards, but they kept their happy faces. The ghost with red hair said that a pair of kings and an ace is a good combination. They all showed their cards. The red ghost had a three, a six and an eight. The ghost with the ponytail had a nine, a jack and a queen. The ghost with the horn on his forehead had three aces. The man turned pale and frowned. He realized that their cards were older than his. Ling Yui threw his cards back into the deck. He understood that there was no justice in the game that these evil spirits used to entertain people. The girl and the man sat next to him in confusion. The ghost with a horn on his forehead extended his palm to them and ordered them to give them money. The ponytail ghost smiled and said he was lucky. He and the red-haired ghost gave him the money, for which he thanked them. A man with a pale face put bills and coins on the table. The horn ghost frowned and angrily asked if that was really all they had. The girl was trembling and shaking. She handed over several coins and one bill, saying that there were five more ritual money. The ghost rudely snatched the money from her hands, telling her to give it all to him. The girl looked in horror at her shaking palm and realized that she was missing a finger. She began to scream shrilly, breaking out in sweat. Ling Yui covered the crying girl's mouth with an apple. He looked at her and raised a finger, asking her not to scream. He said that if she attracted the attention of the conductor, she would clearly not like the consequences. She took the apple in her hands and said that she understood. Her face looked very sad. The ghost who won the cards held her finger and said that if they lack money, then yin organs, yin materials, blood or soul will do, they can use any of these to pay off debts. All three evil ghosts crossed their arms and asked Ling Yui if it was his turn. The skull necklace under his jacket began to glow and crackle. He looked at them confidently, thinking that they dare not put pressure on him, as if they were waiting for death. Powers with a purple aura began to be released from his necklace. The spirits opened their mouths wide and aimed at the ghosts. They flew straight at them, but the ghosts did not see them and continued to sit. The spirits grabbed their energy with their teeth, after which they tore it off and gnawed it. The ghost with the horn on his forehead tensed and asked what was happening and why he felt like he was being chased by someone strong. The ghost with a ponytail also felt uncomfortable and assumed that the conductor had done it, after which he immediately rejected this version. 
All three ghosts looked sharply at Leng Yui and thought that he was the one doing this. The girl timidly turned to the guy and thanked him for the apple. He smiled at her. The ghost looked at them and wondered if that apple had the effect of feeding in energy. Leng Yui pulled out a 100 note and said that he only had the smallest denomination money, and asked if they needed the money. He handed them the money, and the ghost with a horn on his forehead was ready to accept it. The red-haired ghost stopped him from receiving the money and told Ling Yui that there was no problem with the money, and let him put the money on the table. He suggested playing again. Ling Yui put the bill in his jacket and smiled at them, saying that everything was fine. The ghost looked at him suspiciously and thought that he had a hundred ritual money, and also a yin apple. He realized that what he had recently felt definitely had something to do with the yin artifact he was keeping with him. He grinned and thought that this insignificant second-rank hunter was completely arrogant. The red-haired ghost grinned and thought that he would oblige to bleed him and squeeze every last drop of fat out of him before eating him. He imagined how they tied the guy up and cooked him over a fire. The ghost sighed and said that he was not interested in playing for ten ritual money and offered to play for big money. The ghost with the horn on his forehead agreed with him and grinned. The ghost with a ponytail suggested starting with a hundred ritual money so that they would not refuse. All three looked at the people intently. Ling Yui smiled and calmly said that he did not see any problem in this. The girl and man looked at him in shock and were puzzled. Ling Yui deliberately pushed them away, displeasedly saying that these poor people would not be able to take part in such a big game. He said that playing with these beggars, he only had to play for ten ritual money and he could not afford to lose that much time. With feigned disgust, he began to drive them out, showing the appropriate gesture with his hands. They understood what he had achieved, so they looked at him with joy and hope in their eyes, mentally thanking the guy. The girl and man hastily ran away. Lang Yui was left with three evil ghosts. They agreed to play with him. The red-haired ghost took out a deck of cards and announced the second round. He began to quickly and deftly shuffle the playing cards. Lang Yui calmly looked at the deck and realized that there was something wrong with it. The deck was placed on the table. Three cards immediately flew towards Lang Yui. He caught them carefully, holding them between his fingers. He looked at his cards and immediately understood everything. Everything turned out to be too simple for him. He no longer saw the need to play with them. They threw their cards on the table, hitting it, and said that 100 ritual money was too little. The ghosts looked at him questioningly. They immediately began to attack him, rudely claiming that he had no intention of playing from the very beginning. They said he decided to ruin their fun. Ling Yui took out a stack of 10 bills of 100 each. He offered to play with them for 1,000 ritual money. All the passengers who heard this were shocked. All of their attention was directed towards Ling Yui. They could not believe that he had bet 1,000. The old woman turned around and anxiously asked if he was tired of living. The ghost next to her explained that the three were regulars on the 44 train and asked what the man was expecting to defy them. He was told that no one knew what he hoped for, and they asked whether it was even possible to act against three evil spirits at the same time. Ling Yui continued to look at the ghosts seriously while holding the money in his hands. The evil ghosts themselves were at a loss and did not understand what to do next. Ling Yui was problematic for them. A ghost with a horn on his forehead whispered to his friend that playing for 1000 is already somehow risky, even if they have it. His friend, who was holding the cards in his hands, told him that he was a fool, because in the ghost world, as soon as you show your weakness, you immediately become a target for others, and this is the same as standing next to death. The red-haired ghost pointed his finger at Ling Yui and told him that he was not so bad for offering 1,000, but they didn't care what trick he was going to pull. He ordered their game to end at 100 first before the guy blurted out anything else. Ling Yui put the bills back into his jacket and then agreed to play with them. The ghost tensed, and sweat ran down his temple. Ling Yui leaned back in his seat with a smile on his face and crossed his arms over his chest. He told them that they didn't have to worry about whether he wanted to leave because he wanted to have fun too. The red-haired ghost smiled at him and laughed, saying that he should enjoy the game. On his forehead one could see a swollen vein from tension. The ghost himself was thinking that he would let this brainless man die with a clear conscience. He picked up his cards and they began to glow brightly. A purple energy field appeared around him, emanating from the cards. These were poker cards with yin energy. It is enough to introduce yin energy into them, and you can immediately change the suit and number on the cards as you wish. Ling Yui looked at them with a serious face, frowning slightly. The ghost grinned as he looked at his cards, which were surrounded by a purple aura. He thought that even if the guy was lucky with the cards, it would not help him in any way. Ling Yui continued to look at them calmly without showing any emotion. He realized that even if he did not have enough energy to mobilize all the actions of the system, he could still understand that the faces of the cards could be changed. 
Moreover, his connection with evil spirits is not particularly close. A system window has appeared. An orphan Yin artifact has been detected. The red-haired goes through three cards, surrounded by a purple aura, upward. Ling Yui looked up and realized that this deck was actually a natal Yin artifact. The numbers and suit on the card immediately began to change right in the air. The small cards turned into three aces and began to stack neatly on the table. In other words, in this game, victory goes to the owner with the greatest yin energy. The ghost with red hair crossed his arms over his chest and contentedly told everyone to open their cards. His friends continued to hold their cards in their hands, as did Ling Yui. The guy, looking at his cards with a smile, called Zhu Jiang. The ghost immediately appeared behind him, calling him master. Their eyes glowed brightly. Zhu Jiang was invisible to the others, so he was able to quietly raise his hand up and release yin energy. This energy began to be introduced into the cards in the guy's hands. The guy realized that the ideal level Ghost Lord contract allows him to call on the yin power of the ghost contractor. Now he can use a tenth of Zhu Jiang's yin power. Zhu Jiang still continues to release his power. The system window appeared, Zhu Jiang, yin power 36,900. The card absorbed the power while Ling Yui waited. A system window appears, Ling Yui, rank 2 Ghost Lord, spiritual power 825. With training, the data can grow even more. The guy's spiritual power gradually increased from 825 until it reached 4515. Ling Yui's eyes glowed, his cards were surrounded by a powerful aura. He threw the cards forward, lighting the entire area purple. All passengers felt this force, which began to blind them. A stream of air came from the cards. The ghost with the big nose and red hair looked at him in surprise, wondering where the second-rank hunter had such strength. Ling Yui's cards began to pile up on the table next to the red ghost's cards, which were surrounded by a green aura. The red-haired ghost abruptly grabbed his cards from the table when he realized that the yin power he had poured into the cards was gone. He looked at his cards and realized with horror that they were not three aces, but only five, three, and two. He turned pale and began to sweat profusely from excitement. The ghost looked at his friends, whose faces were just as pale and puzzled. Ling Yui grinned mockingly and turned his head to the side. He asked what was the matter and if they had received bad cards. With an absolutely calm face, he reached for his cards and revealed them, saying that he had very small cards. There were four, eight, and six lying there. The ghost with a horn on his forehead awkwardly looked away and showed that he had a two, three, and six. The ghost with a ponytail lowered his gaze and embarrassedly showed three, four, and six. The red ghost was confused, but still showed his cards, there were five, three, and two. He didn't understand if the guy had changed cards. The ghost wondered how he managed to change his cards if he was just a second-rank hunter. He thought it was impossible. The ghost angrily threw his cards on the table, thinking that Ling Yui was using some secret method to increase his yin power for a short time, and so he invited them to play for 1,000. Ling Yui sat imposingly on the seat. The ghost threw him a bill and rudely said that he was just lucky. He believed that he would not last long if they continued to play, and then he could get all his treasures. His friends let out a relaxed sigh as they looked at him. They believed that if they were in his place, the guy would definitely fool them. They gave him their money and called him a fool. Bills and coins began to fall into Ling Yui's hand. He looked at them with disgust, considering ghosts to be poor people. Ling Yui pointed his finger at the table and asked the red-haired ghost if they could continue playing since they had played for a hundred. The red-haired ghost smiled evilly and agreed, saying that he wanted Ling Yui to bet everything. He thought that since the guy did not offer to play for one thousand this time, it meant that his reception would soon end. A ghost with a big nose and red hair, passing by, sighed and said that he was asking for death. The other passengers began to look at him strangely, and a little alarmed. The ghost with big ears replied sarcastically that he was really looking for death. The passenger sitting behind him sighed displeasedly and said that this impudent man was lucky to win once, and now he was going crazy with greed, and asked if he seriously thought that some second-rank hunter could compete with three evil spirits. The red-haired ghost smiled evilly and began to shuffle the frames, announcing the third round. He loudly placed the cards on the table, a green aura emanating from them. The ghost believed that all he had to do was change the faces of the cards, and the person would lose. The next second, his face changed abruptly and became confused. After touching the cards, he began to sweat profusely and worry. His yin power was erased. He raised his embittered and cruel gaze to the guy. Ling Yui looked domineering and completely calm. 
The ghost felt small next to him. Ling Yui smiled creepily, showing his teeth. He looked piercingly at the ghosts, who did not understand how he was able to release such a level of yin power. Ling Yui looked down at the ghost, crossing his arms over his chest and crossing one leg over the other. A ghost with red hair stood and looked at him as if he had shrunk in size. He was afraid that this person was not using any secret methods to enhance yin power. Beads of sweat began to run down his forehead and his pupils constricted. He thought that Ling Yui was not even human. Ling Yui smiled smugly and asked what happened and ordered the cards to be dealt. The red-haired ghost swallowed nervously and reached for the deck of cards. The ghost with a ponytail looked at Ling Yui impudently and began to threaten him that he would now say goodbye to all his savings. The ghost with the horn aggressively shouted to him that when he was left without money, he would tear off this mask from him. The hand of the red-haired ghost was reaching for a deck of cards. She was shaking violently and still could not touch the deck. He lowered his gaze and said that they would not play. His whole face was covered with sweat. His friends were shocked by his statement. The ghost with the horn asked him what happened and if he noticed anything strange about the man. The boss didn't answer him, continuing to look down and sweat from excitement. Ling Yui, with a dissatisfied face and furrowed brows, asked if they would play. He smiled and put his finger on the deck of cards, saying that he had not had time to have fun yet. The ghosts looked at him silently, not knowing what awaited them next. Ling Yui began to transfer his yin power to the cards, and a purple vortex formed around them. The yin force immediately attacked the ghosts directly in the chest, causing them to writhe in pain. The red-haired ghost screamed that he couldn't move. This force chained them to their seats. Several system windows have appeared. The power of the kingdom of ghosts has been discovered. The search for the source of the power of the kingdom is underway. A high-quality yin artifact has been discovered, cheating cards. Ling Yui looked in surprise at the cards that began to rise up. The ghosts still couldn't get out, they tried to remove the force that pinned them to the seats, screaming in pain. Ling Yui looked at them and thought that the power of the ghost realm mentioned by the system must be similar to some power that is governed by rules. Now he was not surprised that the ghosts believed so much in themselves and that the passenger would not leave. After all, thanks to cheating cards, they could simply bypass the rules. The cards magically continued to float in the air. Ling Yui smiled and put his hand to his chin. He thought that he just wanted to teach these arrogant evil spirits a lesson, but he was given such a wonderful opportunity. The ghosts continued to writhe in pain and moan. The red-haired ghost tearfully begged Ling Yui to spare them. He looked at them with a grin and asked if they considered themselves better than humans. He said he was just repeating what they did. He ordered the cards to be dealt. Stacks of three cards flew into the hands of each player. Ling Yui showed his cards and made a satisfied face. He had three aces. He placed them on the table, causing the ghosts to become confused by such cards. Ling Yui asked them for these cards with a bored face. The ghosts immediately held out the money with their trembling hands. They turned very pale with fear. Ling Yui pulled the money into his hands with the help of Yin Power, after which he said with a grin that they themselves allowed him to win. He looked at them from under his brows and announced the next round. The ghost with the horn on his forehead began to cry and said that they had no more money. Ling Yui looked at them with a creepy expression and said that he had not had enough fun yet, and asked if they were the ones who said that even yin artifacts, yin materials, blood or even soul would do, then ordered them to lay out everything. The ghosts began to refuse in tears, placing their hands in front of them as if they were trying to close themselves off. The red-haired ghost said that if they continued to play, the cards would use the power of the rules and rip out their souls. Ling Yui did not feel sorry for them and menacingly put his hand forward, ordering the cards to be dealt. His hand was covered in aura. The cards began to fly out of the deck one by one. As a result, the entire deck of cards flew around the carriage amid the screams of evil ghosts. All passengers were scared and shocked. The last card to fall was the Joker card with the clown smiling evilly. A system window appeared. Congratulations to the owner for receiving three souls of evil spirits. The evil ghosts disappeared and their souls were transferred to Ling Yui's inventory. The guy grinned contentedly, looking at how the cards were folded back into the deck. In ten hands, he took all their yin energy, and the souls themselves were unable to resist the rules of the super-quality yin artifact. Xu Zhang's image appeared behind Ling Yui. He smiled at him. Ling Yui smiled back at him and gave him a thumbs up, thinking that Zhu Jiang would only be happy to deal with these evil spirits. In addition, he received the largest winnings. With the power of Yin, he lifted the cards into the air towards him. A system window appeared, high-quality Yin artifact, cheating cards, automatically linked to the owner. He took the entire deck of cards in his hands and examined them carefully. Ling Yui stood up from his seat and looked back at the deck of cards, smiling. With this artifact he had one more trump card. 
he turned to the other passengers. Their faces were confused and scared. A short ghost in a blue robe said that he had dealt with three evil spirits so easily, and called the guy an evil spirit. The big-headed ghost said that this young man has powerful strength and a hard heart. It is better not to try to offend him. The man without a leg exhaled and said that if it weren't for the guy, they would definitely die at the hands of these three ghosts, and surprisingly, he has terrifying power. The girl looked at him worriedly, raising her eyebrows, and shouted that this quest was the last one for the beginner's exam, and all players must be beginners. The man crossed his arms and lowered his head, asking how such a strong person got among the players. Ling Yui was walking past the passengers at this time. The man and girl turned to him in alarm and thought that he might not be a player. A ghost with blue skin, red hair and green glowing eyes thought that he could not see the potential of his power. He wondered if he had come here because of that news too. The train rushed quickly along bone rails, thick smoke pouring out of it. At the bloody stop stood a short ghost with yellow skin and red horns, with a huge backpack on his back. A woman with long green hair stood next to him. She was wearing a long green dress with a low-cut neckline. The ghost with red horns looked down gloomily. The woman had blue eyes and bright red lips. She was smoking a pipe imposingly. As Ling Yui passed by the girl and the man, the girl stood up abruptly and bowed to him. Thanking him for his help, she called him elder. Ling Yui turned to her and waved his hand, smiling. He told her that he was not a senior at all, but an ordinary new player taking an exam. The girl looked up at him shyly and sweated a little with excitement. The man without a leg sighed tiredly. Ling Yui, looking at them, thought that they thought that he came from some noble ghost family. The other human players looked at him with excitement. They thought that this man's charisma could not belong to an ordinary person, and that only a person like him would feel comfortable and at ease in this game. A crowd of different players immediately gathered in front of Ling Yui. They all confusedly asked what they should do and asked for advice. Ling Yui was confused and did not know what to answer. A guy with brown hair and a headband showed him his ticket and said that he had just checked out the route of Train 44. Their task was to get to the final station between the world of the living and the dead. But the train was only designed to go to the Rotten Bones station, not to the goal four stops are enough. On the golden ticket you could see where the train was coming from and where it was going, and what seats were intended for the passenger. The ticket was valid until arrival on the specified day on the specified transport. Ling Yui, after listening to this, crossed his arms and replied that the first difficulty of the main task lies in this. He added that according to the rule, if they want to complete the task, they must buy a ticket to the station. After that, he smiled slyly, narrowing his eyes, and said that you could find an opportunity to get through without a ticket. All the human players couldn't believe it. They turned pale and asked him again in fear. The guy with red hair said in a trembling voice that he didn't even dare think about such a thing. The guy with short dark hair said that they don't have much strength, and there are extremely strong ghosts in this quest. Ling Yui smiled condescendingly at them and replied that since they got here, they had some experience. He said that since the carriage had become quiet, the best way to deal with it was to observe the changes. The guy turned his back to them and said that since the quest had started, the main task would also begin soon, and only after they figured out the rules and hidden patterns would they have confidence in choosing their own actions. The red-haired guy sat down on the seat and exhaled. He said that as expected of an expert, he was able to remain calm. The blonde-haired girl in the dress clasped her hands together and thanked Ling Yui for the advice. The guy sat down tiredly on the seat and began to think. He realized that even if you study the rules of the quest correctly and find a hole in them, you still need to have enough strength to break through. Ling Yui closed his eyes, frowning slightly. Before a dangerous and strange quest, he must stay in the shadows and save up his strength just in case. Suddenly it became dark in the carriage, the light from the bulbs became dimmer. Ling Yui opened his eyes in surprise, looking at what was happening in the carriage. A thick green aura began to appear in the passage, which spread to the entire carriage. The passengers did not understand where such cold yin energy came from or what was happening. The blue ghost asked if train 44 was famous for its safety. The ghost in the robe turned to him and asked in response what safety there could be in the middle of the ghost world. The guy with brown hair and a headband tensed up and began to sweat profusely. He looked at Ling Yui excitedly and thought that as expected of a ghost from a great family. He was holding calm even in the midst of a strange vision. Ling Yui himself really sat emotionlessly and did not panic. He looked back at the puzzled and confused ghosts. He realized that judging by their reactions, this was not at all like the usual situation on the 44 train. He realized that a powerful ghost was stalking in front of him while he was playing cards. His eyes suddenly widened with the realization of this fact. He looked forward and noticed the blue aura of the ghost sitting in front of him. 
he didn't understand why a fierce ghost would board a low-level carriage. Lang Yui believed that there were demons here. The ghost with the blue aura was a ghost with red hair and a big nose. He said excitedly that they had arrived. Lang Yui looked at him in silent surprise. The guy opened his mouth slightly, asking if the ghost was waiting for this. He didn't know if the ghost he was hiding was going to transform. Lang Yui prepared his skull necklace and armband. He thought that, as expected from the examination quest for beginners, real devilry was going on in this carriage. A woman in a green dress with a fat, short ghost began to appear in the green light. She sang that white bones are not buried on Kingshan. Sticks is difficult to cross with a rope of souls. A woman in a green dress and green hair walked proudly with a smoking pipe in her hands. She continued to sing that people and ghosts are guests, yin and yang cannot be deceived. A beautiful woman exhaled tobacco smoke, followed by a ghost with a huge backpack. The woman asked if the gentleman wanted to make a purchase. The ghostly passengers began to wriggle, jump and scream joyfully. The red-haired ghost frowned and tensed. Ling Yui looked at the woman with a serious gaze, realizing that she was using a technique to master a person. He called on the system. The woman's reflection appeared in the guy's eyes. A system window has appeared. A first rank yin artifact has been discovered. A sapphire tube for imprisoning restless souls. The woman continued to smoke imposingly, green smoke coming from the pipe. The ghost next to her stood and was silent. Ling Yui was amazed that she had a rank 1 artifact. The skulls on his necklace began to whistle. He was confident. The guy clenched his fist, thinking that maybe he had now accidentally acquired a high quality yin artifact. But even such a powerful Zhu Jiang would not refuse a high-quality first-rank artifact. He looked at them carefully. He was interested in what they were selling. After listening to the song, Ling Yui began to have certain thoughts. Suddenly, the entire train staff appeared in the aisle, including the driver and flight attendant. They all bowed deeply to the woman and greeted Hostess Lu from the Kinmen Chamber of Commerce on behalf of Train 44. The passengers were very surprised by this gesture. The driver was dressed in a formal suit and had a cap on his head. He told Lu that according to the rules, representatives of the chambers of commerce could not enter the carriages, so he asked him to wait here. He apologized to him, but explained this by saying that he did not want to break the rules. Lu looked at him with a cold gaze and said that she didn't care, the guarantor of the security of her business was not people anyway. Moreover, she trusted them. Mistress Lu narrowed her eyes and crossed her arms over her chest. She said that Train 44 had been in operation for many years, and the staff was no longer young, and asked if they could take care of her. The staff bowed again and shouted that they would do their best. The driver picked up the walkie-talkie and made an announcement that in front of the passengers was Hostess Lu from the Kinmen Chamber of Commerce. She had arrived to do business. From the speakers, the driver's voice said that during the journey, Hostess Lu would show passengers rare goods. Interested parties could have fun bidding, and after the sales were completed, the Kinmen Chamber of Commerce would leave them. Ling Yui and the other passengers listened attentively to the announcement. The big-eared ghost sitting in front of Ling Yui told his friend that they have a frightening yin energy. This is the first time that Train 44 stopped halfway to pick up passengers and they didn't even buy tickets. His friend, the pink ghost, told him that this was the mysterious Kinmen Chamber and he thought this organization only existed in legends. But now he saw them with his own eyes. The skull-shaped ghost said fearfully that the Kinmen trading Palana appeared on the periphery of the ghost world not to kill people or hunt ghosts, but for business and wealth. He didn't expect them to appear on train 44. Ling Yui frowned and sighed, crossing his arms. Now he was not surprised that there were so many ghosts gathered in the carriage, because they had heard a lot about Kinmen. Ling Yui looked up and crossed one leg over the other, thinking that the evil spirits who came here in droves were a great opportunity. But coincidentally, they were conducting their business through an auction. He wondered if the highest bidder won the auction. Ling Yui grinned excitedly, lowering his eyebrows slightly. It seems that he is destined to emerge from the shadows after all. A system window has appeared, the strongest wealth system. Net worth, 9,985,000,000 yuan. Task 4, big money is needed to demonstrate wealth. Not completed. Contents of the task. When the number of onlookers exceeds 100, place a bet of more than 1 million, 0 out of 1. Reward for the task, chew an Ian iron powder, golden soul silk. Mistress Lu exhaled green tobacco smoke, which immediately began to sparkle. Smoke rushed forward through the carriage, turning into a ball. The ghost with horns took out a nightstand from his backpack. The passengers looked at this with delight. Ling Yui tried to remain calm. He understood that the Kinmen Chamber of Commerce has great influence, so he should look forward to the auction. The ghost pulled out a blue sphere from the bottom drawer. He placed a large green gem on the table. 
The last item was a lamp surrounded by a purple aura. An image of these items appeared in green smoke, revealing the first round lot to everyone. Leng Yui looked at them calmly and ordered the system to evaluate the items. Mistress Lu took the handle of the oil lamp and suggested we start there. The woman said that the dried lamp is a third-rank consumable of medium quality. The oil contained in it can help the user to improve after tanning. Lu closed her eyes slightly and said that increasing yin knowledge is difficult, and the dried lamp can simultaneously increase the rate of development of yin power and yin knowledge, which will have a significant impact on the ghost level and below. The ghosts immediately opened their mouths wide and began to shout that this was a consumable material that could increase the intensity of the training. The blue-skinned ghost shouted that it was also effective in increasing knowledge of yin. Ling Yui listened in surprise to the hostess's announcement, realizing that the system gave literally the same description. The Kinmen Chamber of Commerce is much better at identifying items than people, because they understand consumables in such detail. The ghost in front of Ling Yui began to rub his hands and smile. He asked what the starting bid was for this oil lamp. The hostess smiled at him and showed him the number 5 with her fingers, announcing that her starting price was 50,000. The ghosts immediately began shouting out their bets, raising their hands in the air. At the moment the highest bid is 55,000. A ghost with red hair and a big nose stood up from his seat and bet 60,000. A ghost in a formal suit jumped up from his seat and asked if he thought 60,000 was a lot, after which he bet 63,000. Ling Yui thought with a satisfied grin that not all spirits are poor people like those three gamblers. Ling Yui continued to grin as he looked at the amount of his money in the system window. He listened to the ongoing bets, thinking that compared to his system, they were simply nothing. The guy stood up from his seat and shouted out a bet of 150,000. Everyone in the carriage was stunned and could not say a word to him. The ghost with red hair and a big nose was shocked that he had doubled the bet, and he didn't understand how anyone could make such a bet. The purple-haired girl was very surprised and muttered that this was what was expected from an expert. The man without a leg turned pale and sweated. He said that they couldn't even get money to buy a ticket, and he was spending 150000 on some consumables. Mistress Lu, standing in front of the oil lamp, began counting down in anticipation of big bets. The whole carriage was silent, no one dared to put more. Lu counted to three. After that, she hit the cabinet with her smoking pipe and announced that the lamp was sold. Her smoke caught the lamp handle. The smoke carried the lamp through the rows straight into Ling Yui's hands. As soon as she reached him, Ling Yui gave the smoke his money, and he headed back to the owner. A system window has appeared. A consumable material of the third rank of medium quality has been detected. Dry lamp, automatically linked to the owner. The lamp in Ling Yui's hands began to emit a purple aura. While he was putting it away in his inventory, a dissatisfied ghost looked at him, mentally mocking him, saying that he saw a cheap trinket, could not resist and began to spend his money. Ling Yui sat down in his seat with displeasure and frowned. Now there are not enough viewers to reach 100 so that he can spend a million and complete the task. However, everything happens in stages, and he can only rely on the effect of the program to attract viewers. In the smoke there was an image of the remaining objects. Lu picked up the blue sphere and declared that it was the Pearl of the Immaculate Soul. A system window appears. The Immaculate Soul Pearl is a rank 3 auxiliary yin artifact of medium quality. The artifact can be used by both people with spiritual energy and ghosts with yin power, and has a weak freezing effect. Leng Yui stood up from his seat and raised his hand, shouting what he was buying. The passengers looked at him in horror. Even the owner of Lu was at a loss about this, but she announced that the lot was sold. The woman picked up the third lot, still in shock from Ling Yui. A system window appeared, Soul Heart Jade, a rank 2 yin material of medium quality. Wearing it helps maintain composure and is also used to make artifacts and yin pills with the corresponding effect. Ling Yui calmly stood up from his seat again and shouted what he was buying. His impudence made the ghost sitting in front of him feel uncomfortable, and sweat. Ling Yui had both lots in his hands. The green-skinned ghost said that the guy had already spent 200,000 in the first round alone, and he didn't understand how a second-rank hunter could have such resources. While Ling Yui was putting his purchases away in his inventory, the ghosts in the nearby seats began to whisper. The ghost in the green jacket said that the guy was probably hiding his strength and could be a member of one of the groups, or maybe even part of an internal organization. His friend said that the guy spent so much money in the first round and he was wondering if he had any money left to participate in the second auction. Ling Yui looked around the carriage and realized that because of his strange behavior, even more ghosts had come here, but this was still not enough for him. He raised his head and looked up, confident that he would attract even more attention in the second round. 
The ghost auctioneer offered the following lots, liquid in a vessel, blue grass and an orange blade. The red ghost screamed in shock that the treasures of the second round were even cooler than the first, and the yin power in the blade even made him afraid. His friend, confused, asked what the purpose of the blue liquid and grass was. Lu took the bottle in her hand and said that it was a trace returning liquid, a second rank lot of average quality. She said that it has a powerful tracking effect, just apply it to the target and it can always be tracked. Ling Yui thought for a moment. This is a rare reconnaissance support material that will be especially useful in group operations. Perhaps he can sell it to someone in the future. An image of lots appeared in the smoke, and passengers immediately began placing bids from 300,000 to 400,000. Ling Yui interrupted all the passengers' bets. He stood up and named the amount of 700,000. Mistress Lu and the ghost auctioneer were stunned by his bid. Ling Yui stood up proudly and looked at them confidently, while the ghosts behind him looked at him nervously and anxiously. The guy began to count out the money while the smoke carried him a liquid that returned the traces. Ling Yui decided that in the second round he would put such a price so that others would not even think of chasing him. While he held the container of liquid in his hand, he made a second bet. He wanted to take the buds of the soul eater, that very blue grass, for 700,000. The ghost in front of him was already losing his composure. As the smoke carried the blue aura herb to him, Ling Yui thought that the buds of this crystal blue herb were called soul eater buds. This is good material. By purifying them, one can create a pill, taking which he can increase the power of yin consciousness. This is a very useful thing that will come in handy for him. An image of a blade appeared in front of Ling Yui and the other passengers. The guy was much more interested in this blade. He didn't have a primary weapon yet, so this was a great chance to get one. Mistress Lu grabbed the hilt of her sword with a slight smile on her face. She raised the blade up and began to unsheath it, revealing a golden sword. Lu said that this sheath contains a blade that takes souls. He was first level middle class. It was forged in the periphery of the ghost world and modeled after the blood sword used by the bloody ghost queen. An image of a bloody queen appeared in her head, cutting down all her ill wishers with her sword. The peculiarity of this sword was that it was strengthened with the help of blood. The more you fight, the stronger the owner becomes. You can cut any opponents with it, both people and ghosts. In any case, it activates the urge to suck out all the blood, will add strength to the owner and cause more damage to the enemy. Lu imagined in her head how the bloody ghost queen stood on the corpses of her opponents. After killing, the blade takes the enemy's yin energy and redirects it into the owner's body, so the owner will replenish his strength and heal wounds. The eyes of all the ghosts in the carriage began to sparkle at the sight of the sword. Lu put the blade on the stand and named the starting price at 500,000. Ling Yui remained calm as the other passengers began placing their bets. The guy himself was thinking about the weapon that he already had. The seven mid-rank second-level nails he fired at the ghost in the restaurant are strong, but they can only be fired seven times in the entire battle. And to use more attempts, you need to spend the Kai. The skull necklace hanging around the guy's neck and the pharaoh headband are used for the most part only to protect and limit the enemy's movements. And cheating cards have a high chance of being exposed. They will not be effective enough. Ling Yui thought as he put his hand to his chin. He realized that a life-taking blade was indeed a good choice. He smiled, confident that this blade would go to him. The blue one-eyed ghost stood up abruptly and named the price at 750000 All the ghosts sitting nearby immediately expressed their delight at him. The one-eyed ghost turned around and looked at Ling Yui. The ghost tried to reassure himself that Ling Yui was not interested in the sword and therefore would not compete with him for the purchase. The guy noticed his gaze and frowned. He understood that everyone was looking at him, waiting for his move. Ling Yui stood up abruptly from his seat, causing fear in the one-eyed ghost and surprise in everyone else. He named his bid at 900,000. The one-headed ghost immediately began to tremble and sob, not understanding where he got so much money from. Mistress Lu exhaled the smoke imposingly and began counting to three. Just as she was about to finish the countdown, someone interrupted her and asked her to wait. The hostess was disappointed by this, she frowned and pouted. A ghost in a robe with a crooked face asked her if she thought that this guy was going beyond all limits, because he was shouting out huge prices, which is why the auction was no longer an auction. His friend chuckled with a nasty grin and said that if the hostess did not decide to gradually reduce the price, her chamber would lose its reputation. Ling Yui looked around and saw that the carriage was full of passengers and observers. He realized that this was his chance to complete the task. He raised his finger up and confidently said that he would pay one million. The entire train looked at him in silent shock. 
The blue ghost was angry. He asked if the guy was competing with himself, raising his own price. His friend began to aggressively attack Ling Yui, asking where he got so much money from. He ordered him to stop raising the price, and if he had nowhere to spend the money, then let him give it to them. Mistress Lu blushed slightly and opened her mouth in surprise. She has been in business for many years, but has never seen anything like this. There was tobacco smoke coming from her pipe. Lu was confused by the fact that this did not happen in the center of the ghost world, but on the train with the newcomers. Ling Yui looked at her with a sly smile and asked her if he really couldn't raise his bet. Hostess Lu smiled and replied that he could raise the rate. She didn't care if it was one or two million. They made a deal, after which the woman slammed her pipe on the table. A system window appears, task content. When the number of onlookers exceeds 100, place a bet of a million. Congratulations to the owner on completing the fourth task. Quest reward. Chewing and iron powder, soul devouring golden silk. Lang Yui took the blade in his hands, which immediately began to emit a yellow aura. The guy not only received the main weapon, but also completed the task. He sat down in his seat and put the blade in his inventory. He thought that the third round of the auction would now begin, and even if he did not complete the task, he would at least make some progress in it. A system window appeared. Task 5. You need money to spend it, but you need to spend it wisely. Contents of the task. Spend a total of 10 million. The starting bid should not be yours. 0 out of 10 million. Mission rewards, 3 consumer cashback cards, 10 beginner prop copy cards. Ling Yui looked at the system window and was puzzled by the amount of 10 million. Ling Yui grinned with excitement, because he knew that after completing this task, he would be able to open up the freezing space and enter quests at will. In the image, the lot so far was only a cabinet and Lu's assistant. There was only one problem for Ling Yui. He could not take the initiative in raising the price himself, but if the final lot could drive the ghosts crazy, then he would not have to take the initiative, they would do everything themselves. Assistant Lu began to open the box, the object in which began to blind everyone. A strong blue aura began to spread throughout the carriage. This aura even made the ghosts feel cold, and steam came out of their mouths. Ling Yui looked at the lots with interest, realizing that these were three types of goods. Hostess Lu showed the first lot. These were two yellow pills called Return to the Underworld, third level top class. The packaging itself and the pills were in the shape of yin and yang. The energy from these pills blew Lu's hair to the sides, and behind her appeared an image of a woman holding the pill in her hands. The hostess said that according to legend, these pills were made by the old ghost King Yao Zong. Thanks to them you can restore the state of any ghost to its peak. Ling Yui looked at the image of the pills and thought that by taking the pill, one could restore knowledge, yin power, and spiritual strength. This meant that the pills literally had life in them. Two shiny pills lay in a wooden package, surrounded by a cold aura. The woman held them out and announced the starting price of a million. The ghost with the big nose and red hair has already placed a bet of 1,100,000. The ghosts in the carriage were surprised by his bid. This ghost turned to Ling Yui. The guy realized that he had not yet participated in the auction. The ghost looked at the guy angrily, thinking that he had sat out these two rounds just for this moment. He wanted to take these pills to return to his peak state. Ling Yui stood up from his seat again. The ghost was scared, because he didn't want the guy to bet again. Ling Yui showed the number 2 with an emotionless face and said the amount of 2 million. The ghosts were stunned and disappointed. They understood that this was the price for the audience's attention, but no one could understand where he got so much money from. The red-haired ghost began to sweat from the stress because his savings were not enough to compete with him, but he still could not give up. He turned his head and saw a tense, one-eyed, mustachioed ghost, realizing that this was his chance. The ghost with red hair turned to him and asked if he was also interested in these pills. The mustachioed ghost, fiddling with his palms, answered him in the affirmative, saying that the guy was behaving outrageously. The red-haired ghost bent down to him and said that it would be difficult to compete with this man's finances alone, so he offered to join forces and, if he wins, give the pills equally. The one-eyed ghost was stunned by such an extraordinary proposal. He frowned and began to think about the proposal. He agreed, clenching his fist tightly and turning to face the ghost. The red-haired ghost said he had about one and a half million. The one-eyed ghost scratched his palm and replied that he had about the same amount, after which he offered to place a bet of three million. The image of the hostess counted to three, but she was interrupted by the ghost, betting two million two hundred thousand. The hostess was slightly confused and blushed, but she was glad of the competition, because now there is something to look at. The crowd of ghosts cheered. Some even said that this auction was becoming more and more surprising. Ling Yui made a thoughtful face, frowning. It seemed to him that this ghost was not at all interested in the torques, 
so he did not understand why he gained confidence and decided to do something. The mustachioed ghost turned to him and chuckled. Ling Yui was confused, not understanding what was going on at first. After a second, he realized that these two ghosts had decided to unite. The guy grinned and sighed. He slowly stood up from his seat, deciding to play along with the ghosts. The guy feigned fear and made a bet of 2,300,000, hesitantly raising his hand. He was sure that 2 million was not their limit, so he would pretend that he was not ready to raise the bid, and then the ghosts would raise their price to the maximum. The red-haired ghost smiled and told his partner that the guy had almost no money left. The one-eyed ghost grinned and said that it was not the style of a rich man to raise the rate so weakly. With excitement and smiles on their faces, they raised the bet to two and a half million. The red-haired ghost turned to Leng Yui and began to provoke him, saying that he should bid higher if he had money. This drew approval from the other ghosts. They thanked the couple for bringing down the wrath of all the ghosts on the guy. The short ghost shouted that they were preserving the honor of all ghosts. Someone also started to provoke Leng Yui, saying that he is no longer so cool. Leng Yui pretended to be at a loss and covered his face with his hand. He had a villainous grin on his hand as he realized that everyone had fallen for his trick. In an uncertain voice, he named the raid at two and a half million and fifty thousand. All the ghosts started hooting and cheering. The red-haired ghost grinned and started laughing at him for taking so long to think and only adding 50,000. He made a bet of 2,700,000, saying that if he had enough courage, then let him raise the bet. Ling Yui continued to stand with his face covered so as not to show his emotions. They mockingly asked him if he was ready to give up. He agreed pathetically, saying that he had already spent so much money in the previous rounds, and they kept raising the bet when he was almost out of money. A ghost with a huge mouth and a long tongue turned to the man without a leg and the girl. They were both terrified, and the ghost rudely asked them if all human representatives were so stupid. He said that the further the round, the more expensive the item, and you need to be more prudent. His friend laughed disgustingly and said that this is why people are just food and toys for them. Mistress Lu, with an indifferent face, began reporting to three. She began to think that Ling Yui only had about seven or eight million. She thought that he thought too much of himself in advance, and when the real auction came, he immediately began to deny she was disgusted. She smoked a pipe and continued to count, looking at the guy. Despite this, she believed that he still should not be underestimated. He was a man with large capital, and perhaps powerful individuals on his side. After the auction, she wanted to report what happened to the General Assembly. The ghosts began to mock Ling Yui, asking where his confidence had gone and whether he wanted to up the ante. Someone even asked why he was so stupid. Ling Yui removed his hand from his face and looked at the ghosts frighteningly. The red-haired ghost looked at him worriedly, not understanding what had happened to him. Ling Yui asked him if he wanted the guy to raise the bet. The partners looked at him blankly. Ling Yui put his hand forward and released a purple aura. The red-haired ghost tensed and sweated, feeling terrible pressure. He didn't understand what the guy was going to do. A system window appeared, cashing out three million ritual money. Three one million bills appeared out of thin air. Ling Yui handed over the money and bet three million. The hostess was surprised, but tried not to show her emotions to others. She realized that the guy was just playing along with these two ghosts. The one-eyed ghost turned to his partner and asked what they would do now. All the ghosts in the carriage looked at Ling Yui. The red-haired ghost lowered his gaze in frustration and said to stop, calling the guy a monster. The one-eyed ghost began to sweat. While the hostess counted to three, Ling Yui was under the condemning gaze of the ghosts. Lu announced that the item was sold and passed the pills into Ling Yui's hands using her smoke. She looked with delight at the money she received and said that this man was very interesting. Ling Yui put the pills into his inventory with a smirk on his face. These pills were even capable of bringing the dead back to life, which is a very serious insurance policy for a thriller game. A system window appeared in front of him, showing progress on his fifth task. He completed 30% of the task. Suddenly someone unexpectedly touched the guy on the shoulder. A mustachioed ghost with blue skin appeared next to him. He was wearing an apron and a bandana on his head. The ghost smiled at him and asked the guy to maintain his dignity, asked him to leave the next lot to him. Ling Yui sat down in his seat and began to look at the image in the smoke. He did not understand why the ghost asked to leave him the next lot. An image of a black ingot with gold impurities appeared. Rocks engulfed in fire appeared in the background. The hostess removed the smoking pipe and said that it was a scarlet iron ingot and it appeared within the abyss of blazing fire at the junction of the borders of the ghost kingdom, on the inner periphery. When making various materials based on yin kai, the ingot is capable of converting all the energy into the fire element. If used to craft a yin weapon, 
one can gain an advantage in a fight against a ferocious ghost whose level is higher than the owner. Ling Yui sighed, realizing that compared to pills, this yin material was less attractive to most buyers, but they were also no longer interested in bidding because of Ling Yui. All the ghosts really showed no interest in the auction, except for that mustachioed ghost in a bandana. Ling Yui looked at his elated face, which was filled with hope. Ling Yui was thinking that this old ghost dared to approach him personally and ask him to give in. He was really interested. Ling Yui raised his hand and bet two million. The mustachioed ghost was shocked. He got angry with him and turned to the guy. Ling Yui answered him with a slight smile that the one whose price was higher would receive the lot. The old ghost sighed in disappointment, looking down. He said that he could not compete with the guy due to lack of money, but asked after the purchase to leave the ingot to him so that the ghost would buy it for a higher price when he had enough money. Ling Yui was surprised by his reaction, because other ghosts would hate him if they faced such a problem, but the old man behaves much more nobly. The mustachioed ghost turned to him and agreed that the guy really has a lot of money, and he can buy up all the best, but Ling Yui does not understand the full value of this item, so giving it to the guy would be wasteful and for better use he should sell it to the ghost. Ling Yui smiled and spread his hands to the side, answering that this ingot is only the second level of the highest grade. It's just yin material for forging. The guy just needs to find a good blacksmith. The mustachioed ghost opened his mouth in surprise and opened his eyes wide, because he didn't think that the guy could determine the level and grade so easily. The ghost made a thoughtful face and coughed. He said that the guy expressed himself quite frivolously. Yin material is scarce in the ghost world, and the highest grade is the highest quality and rarest. And this scarlet ingot has many possibilities. If it falls into the hands of the right blacksmith, its value will definitely exceed the second level of the highest grade. The ghost grinned, putting his hand to his chin, and said that there are few correct blacksmiths and they are all hiding, so only an expert like him can figure it out. Ling Yui looked at him in surprise and asked if he was a blacksmith. The ghost looked at the guy, folding his arms over his chest. He replied that he was a famous blacksmith in the ghost world named Din Lion. He really liked this rare material and wants to forge the perfect weapon from it. If he had more money, he would give every last coin. Ling Yui raised his finger up and replied that no matter how much money he offered, it would not be possible to buy him back. But if he signed a contract with him and occasionally did something for him, then the guy could give the ingot to him for free. Din Lion shook his head negatively, saying that he would never sign a contract and would not recognize anyone as his master. He looked at the guy with enthusiasm and offered to become a student. And then Din Lion could teach him a lot, including the technique of making weapons from this ingot. Ling Yui looked at him irritably and remained silent. Green Smoke was already carrying the ingot into the guy's hands. Ling Yui took the ingot in his hands and replied that in that case they had nothing to discuss. Mistress Lu took out a mask in the shape of a skull with horns, emitting a red aura. She announced that this was the last lot for today's auction. This mask was a Wuixian ghost face, second level top grade. She showed the mask closer. The mask was white with red patterns and red horns. The hostess held the mask to her face and explained that her role was to camouflage herself, be it in appearance, physique, or breathing. She announced a starting price of a million, and the ghosts immediately began raising their hands and shouting their bids. The one-eyed ghost with a mustache also raised his hand and made a bet of 1,250,000. He angrily turned to Ling Yui and shouted that they were worthy ghosts, and if they let this person take all the goods, bad rumors would spread about each of them. They must not allow this to happen. The ghost next to him began to laugh. He turned to him and asked what he was laughing at. The laughing ghost had a large scar on his face and was grinning. The ghost with the scar turned to Ling Yui and wanted to say something about what would happen if the person really took the last lot for himself. He grinned slyly again and narrowed his eyes. As the ghosts continued to shout more and more bets, Ling Yui stood up from his seat. Ling Yui ordered the system to use the cashback card. The guy's eyes began to glow red. He raised his hand and confidently named the price of 3 million. The ghosts looked at him with disappointment and said that he had bought everything again. The one-eyed ghost began to sob and shake, shouting that they were all just a joke to the guy. The hostess narrowed her eyes slightly and announced that she had sold the mask. She announced that the auction was over. After that, the smoke conveying the image of the goods sparkled and disappeared. Lu's assistant, Wu San, began to put the cabinet into his backpack. Lu stood a little tensely and smoked, thinking that the guy really managed to take all the auction lots into his pocket. It always seemed to her that he didn't care how much money to spend. He didn't feel bitterness from spending. Only true joy from the process. Ling Yui sat down in his seat and began to try on the purchased mask. 
a system window appears, you have activated your cashback card. The owners spending this time amounted to 3 million. The cashback coefficient is 10. Congratulations to the owner on receiving a cashback in the amount of 30 million ritual money. The guy took off his mask and smiled, thinking that the further he goes, the more money he spends. Lang Yui put the mask into his inventory. This time, he not only attracted the attention of such a large audience, but also acquired amazing things. He decided that when he returned, he would ask an old acquaintance to think and organize how best to use them. Mistress Lu approached Lang Yui and told him that he bought all the goods they had without even thinking about putting such generous prices, which means the guy has significant financial resources. The hostess looked at the guy, Wu San stood next to her. She asked how she could contact him. Lang Yui realized that his behavior had left a strong impression on Lu, and she was considering making a deal with him. The guy stood in front of her and folded his hands as a sign of respect, saying that she could call him Emperor Fengdu. Lu said his name out loud, smiling slightly. She thought that it was thanks to this person that she would be able to move up the career ladder of her chamber. Lu smiled friendly at him and proposed. Their Kinmen Chamber of Commerce offered to become a VIP for him, a limited offer for those with a good reputation and significant financial resources. By becoming a VIP, he will be able to receive notifications and item listings for each of their mobile auctions, and will be able to directly contact sellers from anywhere. At the same time, all his purchases will receive a 20% discount. The ghosts who heard this were stunned by such an offer to the guy. Lang Yui raised his hand, interrupting the hostess, and addressed her. He looked at her seriously and replied that he was ready to become a VIP of the Kinmen Chamber of Commerce, but he would like to ask for one favor. Lu smiled at him and asked him to tell her. Lang Yui lowered his eyebrows and firmly said that if he buys something, then he should not be given a discount. The hostess was taken aback and did not understand why he wanted this. She smiled at him awkwardly, spreading her hands, and replied that the great have their own rules, and they will respect his principles, but the preferential treatment is valid for all VIPs of the Kinmen Chamber of Commerce, without exception. She suggested that he change the discount to 20% cash back. Ling Yui frowned and asked the system if such a condition would do. A system window has appeared, cash back is a gift that does not affect consumption volume. Lang Yui crossed his arms and agreed to her condition. The hostess called Wu San, to which he answered in the affirmative. His backpack opened slightly, and something with a green light flew out towards Lang Yui. The guy raised his hand and deftly caught the object. The hostess, smoking a pipe, said that if there were branches of the Kinmen and Huanquin chambers of commerce nearby, he could come and show his token if necessary. Ling Yui just happened to have this golden token in his hands, on which was written the name of the Huanquin Chamber of Commerce and the fact that it belonged to a VIP client. Ling Yui watched as Lu and Wu San left, holding a token in his hands. He wondered if the Huanquin Chamber of Commerce had anything to do with the Huanquin Hotel, also known as the Underworld Hotel. He remembered what the owner of this hotel looked like and how obsessed she was with money. Ling Yui exhaled tiredly and put the token in his pocket, thinking about the innkeeper. She looked as if money was the most important thing in her ghostly life, but she didn't look like she had a big organization behind her. A round brown ghost approached Ling Yui. He was dressed in a formal suit. The ghost introduced himself. He was the third head of the Sandstorm gang. He extended his hand to the guy and said that if he ever needed high quality ore, he could tell his name to any mining organization, and the ghost would personally serve the guy's envoy. Ling Yui shook his hand half-heartedly and replied that he would send someone as soon as there was time. The ghost in the suit thanked him. He walked towards the exit with a happy face, thinking that at least this time he was unable to buy anything at the auction. But he had made friends with such a powerful creature. He wanted to report this to the head of the family. She would definitely be happy about it. The bald ghost with one eye bowed to Ling Yui and introduced himself as the ruler of the nether heaven. He raised his head a little tensely and said that they specialize in dealing with necromancers. If Ling Yui is interested, he can come to the lower heaven and choose something for himself. Ling Yui replied emotionlessly that he would come if there was time. The one-eyed ghost looked at him in surprise. His face became frightened and worried. He realized that the guy did not care that the ghosts had united against him and ridiculed him at the auction. He believed that for such an influential being, their nether heaven was no different from other small sects. The one-eyed ghost shook the guy's hand and wished him a good trip. The other passengers were surprised that this ghost was kinder than they thought. Opposite Ling Yui, a crowd of ghosts immediately formed, trying to offer him something or make a deal. This crowd pushed Din Lion aside. The girl with purple hair delightedly said that this guy is too cool. The man without a leg shouted that he would definitely write him a message on the forum when he returned back. 
They were all pushed aside by a ghost with a scar on his face who was watching the auction. He approached Leng Yui and asked if he was the Fengdu Emperor. Leng Yui, who was shaking hands with another ghost, turned to him in surprise. The guy looked at him suspiciously, feeling threatened by this ghost. Suddenly the train began to shake and become cloudy. One of the ghosts fell to the floor and asked in fear what was happening. Another ghost asked where the guide was. Everyone panicked. The scarred ghost smiled ominously as a black aura appeared around him. Ling Yui, standing opposite him, felt that something bad was about to happen. The entire carriage was hit by a red energy field. Ling Yui understood that new dangerous trials were coming. Lu started to pull the door handle. She turned to the driver in fear and said that her power was limited by some kind of yin device. She could not use her abilities and could not leave this train. The driver suddenly grabbed the radio and began communicating with the conductor. Ling Yui was surrounded by a purple aura. He asked the ghost with the scar who he was. The ghost smiled at him irritably and replied that he did not need to know this, but what he said now was important. The conductor's voice was heard from the speakers, asking passengers to remain calm. He promised to solve the problem as soon as possible and they would try not to delay the trip so as not to delay anyone. The ghosts listened carefully to the announcement. The staff headed to the problematic carriage. They opened the door to the carriage, attracting everyone's attention. The driver turned to the conductor, a ghost with long blonde hair and a large horn. He told him that it might be the ghost with the scar on his face. Liu and Wu San also walked in front of the staff. Ling Yui looked at them all carefully, thinking about how they all stepped forward. The conductor made an angry face and ordered Scarface not to move. The ghost with the scar on his face snapped his fingers and laughed disgustingly. The lights in the entire carriage went out. Thick black smoke with a red aura began to flow through the carriage. Lu realized that there was another fierce ghost here. Several sinister ghosts appeared in the smoke. One of them was a ghost with long red hair and bloody hooks on his hands. Ling Yui's pupils shrank sharply as he realized that it was a ferocious ghost. The ghost with hooks began to walk towards the owner, telling her that he had heard a lot about her. Lu tensed and furrowed her eyebrows. She answered him that if he was thinking of somehow harming her, and thereby harming the Chamber of Commerce. Then nothing would work out. She asked if he was afraid of revenge. The ghost began to laugh loudly, mocking her. He shouted that they were able to capture the whole train and they are not afraid of the revenge of her friends, because the Kinmen Chamber of Commerce is just a bunch of greedy rats, and after they are done with everything, they will lie low in a secret place where no one will find them. The ghost took a step forward, scaring the other passengers. He said that they isolated the train with the help of a ghost ship and no information would leak from here. With the help of it they lowered their power to the level of ordinary ghosts. He laughed ominously, opening his mouth wide, and shouted that the battle would take place on their territory. Lu got angry and blocked the way to the backpack on Wu San's back, saying that if their goal was a bag of treasures, then nothing would happen without their permission. The ghost grinned and looked in the other direction, asking about the bag. He pointed towards Ling Yui and said that their goal was not only the Chamber of Commerce. Mistress Lu furrowed her brows as a bead of sweat ran down her forehead. She firmly stated that they have no right to touch their VIP clients. The ghost turned towards Ling Yui, swinging its blades. He said that he didn't care about their rules, because there was a very interesting person on the train. And today's catch would be very tasty. Ling Yui glanced at his blade. A system window has appeared. A high-grade third-level yin weapon, a yin sha chain blade, has been detected. Ling Yui sighed thoughtfully as he examined this weapon. Opposite him there were already two enemies, a ghost with a scar and a ghost with blades. He understood that a fierce battle was coming. The ghost with the scar grinned disgustingly and was about to order something to Ling Yui. To his surprise, Ling Yui interrupted him and summoned Zhu Jiang. His fierce ghost appeared from the white smoke, shocking everyone. A ghost with a scar on his face covered his body with his hands, shielding himself from the gust of wind. Ling Yui and Zhu Jiang rushed out of their seats, preparing to attack, because the best defense is an attack. The train continued to move quickly over the rocky terrain. The blade ghost clenched his teeth. He looked at Zhu Jiang swinging at him and couldn't understand how a person with rank 2 strength could subdue a ferocious ghost. Zhu Jiang's sword and the red-haired ghost's blade collided with each other. The ghost with the blades was thrown back towards the end of the carriage. He lay in the rubble and tried to clear his throat. He glanced at Zhu Jiang and asked with downcast eyes if it was really him. Zhu Jiang slowly walked up to him and asked if he knew him. The red-haired ghost had a black eye. He seemed to have seen Zhu Jiang on the way from the periphery to the central zone, where he was able to kill a dozen fierce ghosts single-handedly but he couldn't remember the specific reason for this. The red-haired ghost frowned, his pupils constricting. He took a look at Zhu Jiang and his red aura and realized that he was now not as strong as in the past. 
Now he was just a fierce ghost like the red-haired one, so he had nothing to fear as he thought. He began to gradually rise to his feet. He spun in the air and swung his blades, ordering Zhu Jiang to die. They clashed with Zhu Jiang in a fierce battle. Zhu Jiang frowned, his eyes glowing. He said the ghost was talented. The ghosts collided with each other. Zhu Jiang used the broken soul knife technique. The passenger hiding behind the table looked at Ling Yui and said in shock that this person had curbed the fierce ghosts. The man without a leg and the girl were hiding, watching the battle. The girl began to cry and asked if they would die. Lu, who watched the two fierce ghosts clash, wondered if anyone would have thought that a human would subdue a fierce ghost. The conductor approached her and said that this was an incredible find. A crowd of enemies appeared opposite them. Lu said that although their powers are weakened, they can join forces. In this case, they will be able to cope with one fierce ghost. The conductor smiled confidently and agreed with her. The entire train staff headed towards the growling and threatening enemies. The scarred ghost suddenly moved towards his ally behind Ling Yui. The guy turned to them, thinking that the ghost was hiding from him. The ghost with the scar was hugged by a ghost with blue hair and a horn. He told him that he had to be careful, because this man had a lot of money, which meant there should be enough tricks. The ghost with the scar on his face stood up and told him that he would deal with the guy as soon as possible. He slowly walked towards Ling Yui and began to mock him, saying that he thought too much of himself, even though he had a lot of money and a fierce ghost. The scarred ghost licked his blade and said that the guy's strength was only rank 2. Ling Yui looked at him with hostility and realized that he was just an ordinary ghost and was looking for death. He prepared two nails surrounded by a blue aura. Ling Yui quickly threw them straight at the ghost. The ghost with the scar looked at them and did not understand why they were flying so fast. He did not have time to dodge them. The distance between them was decreasing more and more. The nails went straight into his eyes. The ghost grabbed his face and began to scream shrilly. Ling Yui took out his blade and instantly found himself next to the enemy. He made his first swing with his sword, which was accompanied by a red aura. His aura and light smoke hovered around. Ling Yui looked at the red blade with a powerful aura and understood how killing intent felt. The guy grinned, holding the blade in his hand, and said that it was a good sword. A ghost with blue hair hid in fear on the ceiling. He thought that the guy killed his ghost brother with one blow, and his strength is not at the second rank, but much more terrible. He clenched his teeth, his pupils constricted. The ghost needed to find a way out of this whole situation as soon as possible. He glanced at Ling Yui and his blade, realizing that this person's yin power was infinitely close to that of a ferocious ghost. Ling Yui turned around and looked up, noticing his enemy. He tightened his grip on the hilt of his blade, laughing. The guy asked if this ghost was some kind of weakling, and said that only the best ghost could harness the full power of his weapon. He smiled faintly and began to provoke the blue-haired ghost into a fight. The ghost called him impudent and began to suck in air, puffing out his cheeks. He released the air from his lungs with a terrible, piercing and deafening scream, ordering Ling Yui to die. Because of the screaming, all the windows in the carriage were broken. At this time, Zhu Jiang and the red-haired ghost continued to fight fiercely. The red-haired ghost stopped Zhu Jiang's attack with his blade and said that now his master would die. Zhu Jiang smiled at him with excitement and replied that Ling Yui would only die in his dreams and let him worry about himself better. Ling Yui managed to activate the protective field and was not affected by the high-frequency scream of the ghost. The ghost looked at him in confusion and wondered if he had a yin weapon that could protect against soul attacks. Ling Yui smiled at him and swung his sword, saying that he needed the skull necklace not only for beauty. He took a step forward and ordered the skull necklace to attack. The purple skull moved forward with its mouth open. The skull grabbed the hand of the ghost, who was confused due to the fact that this artifact combines both defense and attack. The guy had a lot more tricks up his sleeves than he thought. He tossed his skull to the side, pushing himself backwards. He believed that if he died here, he should take this person with him. Ling Yui threw glowing nails at him. The ghost easily dodged them and said that these were all useless tricks and asked the guy if he really thought he was some kind of trash who couldn't dodge something like that. Ling Yui stopped the remaining nails and agreed with him. After that, he took out a blue orb and said that in this case, he would use the ice soul orb. He pointed the artifact towards the ghost, and it immediately began to freeze. The ice quickly shackled his limbs, the ghost realized that his affairs were going badly. He looked at his arm and leg, which were immobilized by a thick layer of ice. The ghost said in confusion that the guy used another trump card, not realizing how many of them he had. He was angry that this time he was unable to dodge and was infected with the icy spiritual power. Ling Yui stood directly in front of him with his blade. He readied his weapon and looked at the ghost angrily. Since he awakened his spiritual power, this is the first time he uses it seriously. 
He has now transformed physically and mentally. Ling Yui tightly grabbed the hilt of his sword and began to mentally list what he now had. Spiritual strength, spiritual awareness, combat experience, ice soul sphere, soul taking sword, blood blessing. His blade began to glow fiercely and seemed to be on fire. Ling Yui realized that he was not afraid of ghosts. He swung his sword at the ghost with all his might, ordering him to die. The ghost looked fearfully at the blade, which was getting closer and closer to him. The green light appeared in his eyes and he grinned. The ghost's hand stopped the sword exactly at the moment when it was about to pierce the ghost's head. Ling Yui didn't understand what happened. He looked at his sword in confusion. The blade was held by a hand that grew from the ghost's back. Ling Yui put his sword back, saying that the ghost also had his own tricks. The ghost stood up and said that the guy forced him to take extreme measures, and for this he would die today in agony. The enemy screamed loudly and piercingly, raising his head up. Numerous growths began to appear on his back. From them grew many hands that were striving outward. The ghost laughed nastily as he stood in front of the confused Ling Yui. The guy was embarrassed and disgusted, he said that it was disgusting. The ghost opened his mouth wide and asked how dare he say such nonsense, promising him that he would die today and be a good addition to his collection of souls. The ghost pounced on him, pointing all his hundreds of hands at the guy. Ling Yui activated his skull necklace, which immediately began to glow brightly. A protective field appeared around the guy, which prevented the ghost from delivering at least one blow to him. The ghost stopped and asked wearily how an artifact could combine mixed yin kai. Ling Yui ran sharply in the other direction. He repelled the ghost's attack with his sword. Then, with his blade, he began to cut off the hands of the ghost's long arms. One by one, the limbs scattered to the sides. The bright light of the blade illuminated the dark carriage. The ghost began to scream shrilly in pain. He fell onto his stomach, half of his arms on his back now handless stumps. Ling Yui looked at him with excitement and asked if he could raise his hands now. The ghost opened his toothy mouth wide and shouted that this was his innate talent, a method of burning souls. He declared that he would turn all his pain and wounds into a flash of killing energy. He laughed loudly, stretching out a hundred of his hands towards the guy. The ghost shouted that his technique was much stronger than the guy's trinkets. Ling Yui easily cut off his hand again and disappointedly asked if this was all and if he could really become stronger through pain, after which he activated the burning technique. The ghost opened his eyes wide and shouted that he would not hide from him. Hundreds of hands once again rushed towards Ling Yui with terrifying force. He was confused, but still managed to dodge the attack. The passengers hid and covered their heads. The blue ghost said that he was very scared, and it was some kind of monster in a ghostly shell. His friend helplessly asked what they should do, because he believed that the guy would not cope with the enemy, and then they would have to defend themselves. The purple-haired girl was crying, and the guy with the headband shouted that if Ling Yui died, they would be killed too. The ghost's hands accidentally hit the broken window. The ghost looked at them in confusion and realized that his hands were stuck in the window. Ling Yui smiled when he realized that the moment had come. He summoned Bai Zhu. A pink aura appeared in the air, and behind it, Bai Zhu appeared behind Ling Yui. She raised her hand up and activated the energy of hatred. Her pink power began to envelop the ghost. She immobilized the enemy and knocked him to the ground. The ghost couldn't believe that Ling Yui was able to subdue the second ghost. Bai Zhu stood modestly next to her master. All the attention of the carriage was focused on them. The passengers were surprised how Ling Yui controlled two fierce ghosts and how this was possible. The ghost shouted to him that nothing would help the guy and he was rejoicing too early. He went on the attack again, releasing his hands from his mouth. Ling Yui easily chopped off another hand, saying that he was disgusted to hear his death rattles. The ghost looked at the stumps of his arms and did not understand why his arms were no longer regenerating. Ling Yui approached him, asking if he expected this. The guy looked at Bai Zhu, who continued to hold the ghost with her power, and thought that her skills supported by the energy of indignation were very strong. They could temporarily deprive the enemy of his innate talents. Bai Zhu caused this ghost's regeneration ability to weaken. The ghost began to plaintively ask him to stop. Ling Yui had already prepared his blade while surrounded by a red fierce aura. He made several precise swings of his weapon. All the arms on the ghost's back were cut off. With tears in his eyes, he begged for mercy, justifying himself by clouding his mind, and promised that he would never appear in his life again. He plaintively shouted that if Ling Yui let him go, he would order the rest of the robbers to stop attacking, and his two brothers would only listen to him. They controlled an artifact that suppressed the power of the ferocious ghosts on the train. The ghost promised that if the guy saved his life, he would free everyone on the train. Ling Yui began to approach him, asking about this artifact. The ghost smiled at him with tears in his eyes and answered in the affirmative. 
The guy smiled cruelly at him, saying that he couldn't lie. The ghost fell into despair and began to threaten him with the fact that his brother would break every bone in him and destroy his soul to such a state that every particle would be in the corners of the entire ghost world. With one swing of his sword, Leng Yui decapitated the ghost. The carriage fell into silence, the ghost's soul flew out of his body. The guy with the headband turned to Leng Yui and asked if the ghost was dead. Leng Yui ordered the system to give him the talisman of extermination. A talisman in the shape of a piece of paper began to appear from the inventory. He applied it to the ghost's body. After this, the ghost's soul let out its last cry, and its entire body was covered in fire. Ling Yui smiled as he looked at the corpse and said that the ghost was definitely dead now. The passengers called him a god and rejoiced at his victory, noting his good work. The ghost with a mustache was surprised that he killed one of the three leaders of the band of robbers so quickly and now he understands where he got so much money from, because he is cool in his own right. His friend added that he not only cut off the head of the main ghost, but also used a spell that completely expelled the soul. Din Lion smiled, putting his hand to his chin. He said that there was something special about this guy, and he came up with a good idea. After all, Ling Yui is the main character, which is the focus. The red-haired ghost robber turned to his brother's corpse. Behind him stood Zhu Jiang. Zhu Jiang pointed his sword at the enemy and shouted that his master had burned his bro's soul. The red-haired ghost screamed in frustration and began to sob. He ran furiously towards Ling Yui, promising to kill him. The ghost was preparing to attack the guy from behind, hitting him with his blades. Ling Yui turned to the embittered ghost and said that it was better for him to think about himself. Zhu Jiang threw his sword at the ghost, aiming for its back. The robber was able to repel the attack with his blade. Zhu Jiang ran towards his enemy with lightning speed. He and the robber were about to clash again in battle. Zhu Jiang swung his strong fist. He hit the ghost right in the face, knocking out a tooth. After that, Zhu Jiang threw the ghost up. He threw it back so hard that the robber made a hole in the ceiling of the train and flew out. The ghost knelt on one knee on the roof of the train, not understanding how such a small train 44 ended up with such powerful passengers. Zhu Jiang jumped out of the carriage onto the roof and ordered the ghost to stop his escape. The robber turned to him, preparing his blades. He ran forward and made a hole in another part of the roof. The ghost looked into the carriage and asked the second brother for help. At that time he was with the mistress Lu. His brother immediately agreed, activating his blue aura. He threw Lu aside with his strength. After that, he jumped up onto the roof of the train. Ling Yui stood between Lu and the wall, preventing it from hitting her. He caught her in his hand, and Lu looked at her savior. Ling Yui, holding the mistress in his arms, looked at the hole leading to the roof and said that their affairs were bad. Lu asked the main character how things were going with his opponent. Ling Yui said that he killed the third head of the robbers, and with the help of his assistant Zhu Jiang drove the fierce ghost onto the roof of the train. He said that if they allowed him to team up with reinforcements, the situation might turn out unfavorably for them, and the two of them could defeat Zhu Jiang. Lu frowned and said that was bad. She said that this fierce ghost scattered them around like kittens, and they could not do anything. The main character shouted to them not to worry because he would figure everything out. He told Bai Zhu that he was leaving everyone under her protection. Jumping onto the roof through a hole in the ceiling, the main character thought that he could not let them team up and kill Zhu Jiang. The two ghosts in front of him were fighting with Zhu Jiang. A ribbon glowing purple shot forward from his hand. The tape surrounded one of the ghosts. Turning around, the ghost asked that he dared to interfere in their battle, despite the fact that he was only a second rank. He hit the tape sharply with his hand. The ghost opened his eyes in amazement and exclaimed. The protagonist said with a grin that the cursed pharaoh's headband, a first-class ying weapon, is enough to suppress even a fierce ghost. The tape enveloped the ghost, immobilizing him. Another ghost asked Zhu Jiang how dare his master interfere. He asked if he really thought that he, whose strength was at the second level, could withstand the battle of the fierce ghosts. He told him to save his life, grab him and run away. Zhu Jiang asked with a grin why he thought so. He told him to look back, because his friend was lying foaming at the mouth, and he was not a hindrance to his master. The ghost turned around in amazement to see his comrade lying on the floor, cursing. He shouted that first he would free him, and then they would kill him together. Zhu Jiang hit with yellow energy. The ghost lying on the ground thought that even his ying power had been blocked, and this was a first-class ying artifact. Looking at the main character, he thought how many more treasures this man had in his hands. Several talismans appeared above Ling Yui's hand, shrouded in yellow energy, and the ghost exclaimed in fear. The main character threw the talismans forward. Many talismans enveloped the ghost's body. There was an explosion and a column of red energy rushed upward. The ghost screamed loudly in pain. 
Lang Yui, exhaling, said that the spell caused him more damage than usual, and it seems that when using spells and artifacts together, their power is summed up. He loosened his grip on the ribbon enveloping the ghost. The ghost, breathing heavily and cursing, asked if he dared to fight him without using his artifacts. The main character asked if they didn't fight fairly, and why complicate things. He invited him to let him go, and in return he would recognize him as his master. The ghost clenched his teeth in anger and swore. Shrouded in blue energy, he clenched his fists. Ling Yui jumped back and asked about dispelling the artifact's power. The ghost shouted that he would take his head and eat it. Zhu Jiang jumped over both ghosts in one leap and stood between the ghost and the main character. Turning around, he said that it seemed that he had already fallen into a berserker state, and he no longer cared about the consequences. Ling Yui told him not to worry about him and to continue dealing with the sickle ghost. He said that he would help him when the opportunity was right. Zhu Jiang asked if he was serious. He asked if he really wanted to help him during his battle, because these were very dangerous opponents. He asked if it wasn't too dangerous. The main character looked at his palm and said that he still had a couple of trump cards up his sleeve, and all he was facing was a ferocious ghost who had lost his composure. He said it wasn't difficult. Zhu Jiang said that his strength was really starting to scare him, but he felt relieved that he would not lose the battle. Ling Yui, shrouded in a purple aura, thought that his advantage was the endless flow of high-quality Ying artifacts, which could have a key impact on the game, and if he did everything right, he would crush them overwhelmingly, and they would want to escape. An enraged ghost with fists shrouded in blue energy was approaching him. The ghost's legs were shrouded in blue and red energies. The ghost shouted, innate talent, Ying Kai compass. The ghost with the sickle shouted, innate talent, strongest technique. Ling Yui turned to Zhu Jiang and said that it seemed that their battle was entering the final stage. He told him to use the strongest he had because they were using the soul destruction method. Zhu Jiang's eyes glowed yellow and he obeyed. The whirlwind of yellow energy surrounded him. The protagonist thought with a smile that this was the first time he saw the full combat power of Zhu Jiang. Ling Yui extended his hand into the purple circle that appeared in the air. He took out playing cards from there. He said with a grin that he was simply using a high-grade third-order Ying artifact to win this drawn-out battle. The ghost, looking at his feet, exclaimed in amazement that the Ying compass had turned. The main character was holding playing cards in his hand, shrouded in purple energy. He grinned, and the ghost thought that this was an artifact of the highest rank. The sickle ghost asked how this was possible, since this kind of thing should not appear on the periphery of the ghost world. He thought that this was abnormal, because there could not be such a huge ghostly force on the periphery of the ghost world. He wondered where he got this from, because the Kingaming Chamber of Commerce couldn't bring this product, and he doesn't even know how lucky he was with this artifact. The sickle ghost said that if they could take this top-ranking artifact from him, the strength of their plunder squad would increase manifold and they would no longer have to hide in the future. Shrouded in red energy, he jumped at the main character to attack. Zhu Jiang, turning around, shouted to him not to approach his master. He hit him with a blast of yellow energy. The magic circle under the other ghost's feet glowed blue, and he used the Ying Kai Compass Teleporter. Finding himself behind the main character, he rushed to the attack. Turning around, Ling Yui threw a playing card at him and said that he was just in time. The ghost shouted with a grin that he thought too much of himself. He activated the teleport again. The main character snapped his fingers with a calm face. A playing card flying in the air suddenly changed its direction of flight. It passed through the ghost's body, flying out of his chest. Looking at his chest, the ghost said that it was a tracking attack. Grinning, he said that it was just a scratch. Many playing cards pierced his body, and he exclaimed in amazement. The main character, holding the playing cards in front of him in the air, said with a smile that this Ying artifact is poker cards, and they are unpredictable during their normal use, but during an attack they are capable of anything, and this is a worthy artifact. The ghost with the sickle shouted at him not to touch his brother. He said he would kill him. Another ghost, blazing with blue energy, screamed loudly. Crossing his arms in front of him, he activated teleportation. Zhu Jiang, standing back to back with the main character, exchanged blows with the ghost with sickles. Turning around, he said that this was bad. Suddenly he realized that there was no one around. The ghosts rushed to attack Leng Yui. They grinned wickedly. The train entered a tunnel. Zhu Jiang called out to the main character. They found themselves inside a dark tunnel. Leng Yui stood in pitch darkness, shrouded in a purple aura. He turned on monster mode and his eyes glowed red. He discovered the silhouettes of ghosts that swung at him to attack. Several playing cards shrouded in purple energy appeared around him. Playing cards shot out in all directions. They repeatedly pierced the bodies of the ghosts around him. The ghost with the sickle shouted that it was useless, because even if he killed them, they would take him to the grave with them. 
Ling Yui asked if he thought these were all the techniques and artifacts he had. A talisman shrouded in yellow energy appeared above him, and he said, A talisman that holds the soul. Talisman that kills spirits. Explosion. The talisman was attached to the ghost's chest and glowed with bright energy. There was a huge explosion. The rock through which the tunnel passed was breaking into stone fragments. The ghost with the sickles screamed and cursed. Zhu Jiang stood ominously behind the other ghost. He told him not to dare to lay a finger on his master. After hitting him, he told him to die. The ghosts glowed with a bright yellow light. Having crumbled into pieces, they slowly disappeared into the air. The train left the tunnel, and the night sky opened up before them. On the floor in front of them lay a huge sickle. Kneeling down on one knee, Chu Jiang apologized to Ling Yui. Looking down, he said that due to his negligence, he had to face two ghosts alone, and he was ready to accept any punishment. The main character said with a smile that in battle there are such unforeseen situations, but everything remained under his control, and they won. He told him to stand up. Zhu Jiang said that he couldn't help but pay for his mistake, so he had to accept any punishment. Ling Yui said that in that case, for leaving him alone to fight the two fierce ghosts, he should prepare him a delicious dish. Zhu Jiang raised his head, and the main character said that if he thinks that this is not enough, he can punish himself with three cups of alcohol. Liu, standing on the train, noticed that the shaking had stopped. The guy with brown hair said that there were terrible sounds coming from there, and it seemed like both sides were using their strongest cards. He said it was difficult to say who won. The ghost said that there were two fierce ghosts, and even that divine person would have a hard time defeating them. He said that if the robbers win, then things are bad. The main character said that this would not have happened. Turning around, they saw Ling Yui and Zhu Jiang. Noticing two glowing blue orbs, Liu asked what he was holding. One of the ghosts exclaimed that this was the elder brother and the second brother. Liu asked if he killed those two fierce ghosts. The main character said yes, and these misunderstandings were over. The lights on the train turned on. Liu and the ghost with long blonde hair exclaimed that the debuff had been removed. The ghosts asked in fear how this could happen. The long-haired ghost and Liu, shrouded in an aura, said to leave it on them. They began beating the ghosts with their fists, throwing them around the train. The main character said that after the suppression was lifted, the driver not only regained his strength, but also earned home court advantage, because this is his train. Zhu Jiang said that it seemed like this was what he expected. Bai Zhu said that this is the Ying weapon that he ordered her to find, and it is the reason for suppressing the power of the ferocious ghosts. The main character praised her. The system reported that he had discovered the Soul Lock, a high-end second-level Ying device. Soul Lock collects Ying spiritual energy from the target and imprisons them, and the target's power will be reduced by at least one level. The train was traveling among the rocks. The voice asked the passengers to take their seats because all the uninvited guests had been eliminated. He said that he wanted to express his deepest apologies for the fact that they were attacked, and it was all because of the poor security of Train 44. He said that a little later, each of them would be given a free lunch. Ling Yui frowned and thought that it seemed like they were preparing this lunch from some kind of waste. The ghost with long hair asked if he was Emperor Fendu. The main character turned to him and said yes. Bowing, the ghost thanked for eliminating those dangerous, ferocious ghosts, because he saved not only the train crew, but also all their passengers. He thanked him on behalf of the entire 44 train. He gave him the souls of dead ghosts because they deserved to belong to him. He said that he later asked the conductors to deal with their Ying artifacts and give them to him too. Lang Yui said that he would not dare to refuse. Lu said that she also owes him a great debt. She said that she made a personal promise that if he asked her for help, she would do everything possible to help him. The main character thanked her and said that he had something to say. He said that the Ying weapons they used to suppress their powers had been incorporated into their spiritual power structure in advance. Lu said that this incident was pre-planned, and it was very likely that everything was prepared by some large force. She asked if they had any idea who it could be. A voice announced that the train was about to arrive at Beiyuzuka Station. Lu apologized and said that she needed to leave because she needed to report the incident to her chamber of commerce as soon as possible. She told him to just contact her if he needed anything in the future. Leaving behind a trail of blue energy, she disappeared. Turning to the conductor, Ling Yui said that he had something else. The conductor asked how he could help him. The main character said that he only bought a ticket to Beiyuzuka Station, but for some reason he needs to get off at Hakao Terminus Station. The conductor said that this is not a problem, because he is asking for such a small favor, and it is not difficult for him to fulfill it, because he is the savior of their train. He said that in the future, travel on their train would always be free for him, and he would be their guest of honor. The main character took the golden card from his hands, 
and the conductor said that he could sit at any stop he wanted, and he would definitely be put in a separate room with a soft sleeping bed, and all the food in the dining car would be at their expense. He said that he could fully enjoy the VIP service without spending a penny. The main character thought that he needed to spend as much money as possible. The conductor asked, since he was going to the final stop, why not change to the most luxurious box of their train? He said that he would immediately ensure that their most luxurious dishes were prepared for him. Scratching the back of his head, Ling Yui said that he didn't mind. He said there were still human passengers on the train. He asked if he could also extend the validity of the ticket straight to the end. The girl asked the guy next to her what they should do, because their stop was about to come, and they didn't even change their ticket, although they needed to get to the final one. The guy said that she herself had seen the strength of the conductors, and they did not have enough strength to evade paying a fine for not getting off at their stop. The female conductor asked them about their tickets to Bayuzuka Station. The purple-haired girl asked if she could extend the trip or get another ticket because they needed to get to Hakao Station. The guy asked how much it would cost. The conductor, looking to the side, thought that these people were all the same and were disregarding the rules for their own purposes. She said that they could issue a ticket and it would cost 214 ritual money. The guy said it was too expensive. Raising his index finger, he asked if the amount could be paid off with some consumables or items. The conductor said they didn't have to pay. Smiling, she said that Emperor Fendu personally asked her to arrange tickets for them until the end, so she would not charge them anything. The guy and girl opened their mouths in shock. Baiju, the main character, and Zhu Jiang were playing cards. Baiju looked at the door. The main character asked if anyone else was looking for him. They saw Din Lian standing at the door, looking down. Ling Yui thought in amazement that it was him. Din Lian scratched his head and said that he had recently said that he would let him become his disciple, and it seemed like he had greatly underestimated him. He suggested we become friends. He said that then he would not have to take money from him, and he would give him scarlet transparent gold, and he would help him forge the most valuable Ying artifact from it for free. The main character thought with a smile that this old man is not interested in money, and he really loves to forge iron. He thought that he could definitely be called a master of his craft. Extending his hand, he suggested that we drop the nonsense about friends and just sign a contract with him. He said that he promises that he will supply him with the best materials for forging Ying artifacts. Din Lion scratched his cheek awkwardly. The main character said that he personally saw its financial resources and combat power. He said that he knows that he thinks that he will force him to work for him in order to make money from him. He assured him that he would not force him to do such a thing. Ling Yui said that what he values in him is his identity as a ghost master, and he doesn't know what his preparation level is. He said that he was giving him a chance and he should think carefully about it. Clutching his head, Din Lion said that his words made sense, and he had never thought about signing a contract, because it would mean losing his freedom, so he was very worried. The main character, grinning, offered to do this and promised that he would give him the greatest powers regarding the creation and ennoblement of artifacts. He said that, except for the most basic requirements, he would not restrict any of his actions. He said that, in any case, he has enough materials and money, but not enough processing skills, so it doesn't matter how many materials it takes to create an artifact, because the main thing is a quality result. He said that based on these requirements, he believed that he and he were pursuing the same goal. Din Lion smiled awkwardly, thinking that this young man is very casual, and he seems to understand him better than anyone. He asked if the fact that he was greedy for artifacts and was trying to outsmart him bothered him. A piece of paper appeared above Ling Yui's hand and said that he would trust it. He thought that with the perfect ghost control contract, he had nothing to worry about. Grabbing a piece of paper, Din Lion agreed. He wrote on the paper, I voluntarily swear allegiance to Ling Yui. Din Lion. The leaf was enveloped in purple energy, and he thought that he had made the right choice. This young master, like him, strives for perfection, and he is quite intelligent. He thought that he should help him create better Ying artifacts. Din Lion bowed. The dialogue box says, Class, Ghost, Ying Creation, 900, Ying Strength, 95,000, Ying Weapons, Blood Demon Soul Smelting Forge, Blood Demon Soul Casting Platform, Ying Fen Carving Knife, Tempered Alcohol Atlas, Skills and Talents, Identifying Materials, Treasures and Counterfeits. The main character thought about a complete set of four forging artifacts, including even one high-class one. Smiling, he thought that it seemed like Din Lion's blacksmithing skills were better than he thought. He told him that from now on he was responsible for all his ying utensils and materials. Baiju greeted him. The train stopped at the station. He stopped at Hakao Station. Quest Train 44 is completed. 
a purple aura surrounded Ling Yui. Current number of survivors, 8. Looking at his fist, he thought that this quest was the ultimate test for rookies, and he had now graduated from rookie status. He thought that the next thing he would encounter would be a world of real ghosts. As he walked up the steps, the main character said that he really needed to get a good rest before doing this. The full moon was shining above Research Center 9. Someone was typing on a blue backlit keyboard. A list of forum topics appeared on the screen. Then a topic was opened asking how many newcomers from the fifth batch were still alive. Yu looked at the monitor screen, reading people on the forum who were sharing their difficulties while completing their tasks. Placing her face in her palm, she said that the third rookie task is very dangerous, but it provides many opportunities, but most die, and thanks to the strong rookies, some weaklings even manage to escape. She said that these strong newcomers are people with great potential who use their abilities to the maximum and even control ghosts, collecting valuable Ying artifacts along the way. Licking her lips, Yu said that this night there will definitely be some geniuses among the fifth batch of newcomers. A text appeared on the screen, is it possible for a high-level player to appear in a quest for beginners? Yu said that their task was to take train 44 to the final station, and halfway through the journey, an organization called the Kingaming Chamber of Commerce held an auction for high-level Ying artifacts. However, all the goods were bought by some mysterious demon calling himself Emperor Fendu. Not a single ghost managed to outbid him. Then two fierce ghosts appeared, bringing with them several more comrades to take over the train. They also limited the transparent power of the train staff and the guards of the Kingaming Chamber of Commerce, and at this time, Emperor Fendu made his move and beheaded all the bandits. The guy typed on the keyboard, saying that after that he asked the conductor not to charge them and take them to the final station, and all eight people survived the task, more than half of whom now worship Emperor Fendu as a god. He said that he wanted to know who this great god called Emperor Fendu was because he wanted to express his sincere gratitude to him. People told him that what he said seemed so reckless that it was hard for them to believe it. The girl with purple hair said that she was convinced of everything herself, because then he really helped her a lot, and he is really very powerful. She said that he actually defeated two fierce ghosts, but he was not alone, and he was helped by his subordinate fierce ghosts. Yu said that Train 44 and Kingaming Chamber of Commerce are highly respected neutral organizations in the ghost world, and the robber gang is a ferocious group operating on the periphery of the ghost world. She said that the discussion on this topic is definitely not fake, and the fact that eight people survived this mission is easy to verify. The stars were shining in the night sky above the apartment building. Li, sitting at the computer, asked if this was Ling Yui. She asked if his power had become so enormous, because he had spent about 10 million ritual money and defeated two fierce ghosts. Frowning, he said that she did not allow them to interrogate Ling Yui. A message appeared on the screen, I confirm. Emperor Fendu is rich and very powerful. Exhaling, Li said that he still hadn't called her. Someone wrote that they are ignorant, and he himself saw Emperor Fendu with his own eyes. Huan Dao said that last time at the fourth forum trade fair, he generously paid for his goods by giving him the purest bronze ritual coins, and because he interacted well with him, he even gave him a tip for his polite attitude. He asked if it was strange that such a rich man could be so strong. He said he would have doubted it if it were the other way around. Someone told him not to brag indiscriminately, which offended him somewhat. People on the forum wrote that if he says it, then you can trust him. Someone wrote that it seemed to him that they were conspiring to show off. Someone else also expressed doubts about the veracity of this story. Quan Dao said that if they don't believe him, he will see how they react to Bai Yi's words. He said that the great god Bai Yi had made a deal with Emperor Fendu, which they should definitely believe. Pressing the key, he pinged Bai Yi. In a large residential building, the light was turned on in one window. Bai Yi came out of the bathroom, drying her hair with a towel. She noticed an alert on her computer. Her eyes opened wide. Walking over to the computer, Bai Yi asked what they were saying about Emperor Fendu. There was a question on the screen asking if experienced players could appear in a newbie challenge. She said that based on what was mentioned, all his actions mentioned in the posts are true. She said that from a financial point of view, the quality of the Yin Kai copper coins he used to pay was perfect, and the energy in them was 100% preserved without any trace of leakage. Bai Yi said that it seems that this person already has vast battle experience in the ghost world, and now it is no surprise that he was able to spend tens of millions of ritual money at the auction. Typing on the keyboard, she said that from his point of view, he had a fierce ghost under his command, so dealing with two fierce ghosts would not be difficult for him. She wrote that at the last fair, Emperor Fendu took out a thousand copper ritual coins of excellent quality and revealed that he had a fierce ghost under his command. 
People on the forum wrote that if even Baiyi said it, then it must be true. They made assumptions about where such a strong person came from in the game. Baiyi, sighing, said that the world of ghosts is a large and complex space, everything is connected there, including their world, so many people end up there. She asked about ghosts invading the human world. She said that this type of thing did happen in the past, and now it's happening more often. The door to the room swung open. Yu happily ran into the room, greeting Bai Yi. She hugged her and Bai Yi asked why she was breaking into her room and if something happened in her mission. Yu said that nothing happened in the mission, and she came about the invasion of real ghosts. She said that a supernatural event had occurred in Jiangcheng, and the entire prefecture was being assessed for danger. Frowning, she said that she had come to gather people. Bai Yi thought that if the danger is assessed at the level of an entire prefecture, then the ghost is at the level of ferocious, and at least a level 4 player, or higher, should lead the elimination team. She thought it was not surprising that the government had to turn to their forum for help. She asked if she wanted to make a recruiting announcement. Yi Yu exhaled and said that it would be later. She said that if the media published this news, their no. 9 investigation center would be shown in a helpless light, and their reputation would suffer greatly. Smiling, Bai Yu said that it seemed like she had some great idea. Alerts continued to sound on the computer, and Yi Yu said that she wanted to contact the Fendu Emperor. A scattering of stars sparkled in the sky. The dialogue box said, Current level, third level Ghost Lord, Spiritual Consciousness, 225, Spiritual Power, 2235. When spiritual power reaches 25 spiritual consciousness will automatically add 25 points, and you will reach the fourth level. The main character, sitting at a table full of food, said that he did not expect that he would do it so quickly, and the essence of a ferocious ghost is very different from an evil one, but he still completed the task promptly. Rising from the table, he said that the series of tasks for beginners was completed, and he needed to prepare to explore the real world of ghosts. He decided to go to the forum first. A notification about a new personal message appeared on the monitor. Ling Yui saw that the message was from Bai Yi and asked what happened to her. Bai Yi wrote that the Jiangcheng incident caused the death of hundreds of innocent people, so the research center wants to accept him as the team leader. The main character said that, as he thought, something happened to them. He said that it seems that as the thriller game's influence has expanded, the existence of ghosts has affected their real world as well. Rubbing his chin, he said he wasn't interested in money. Ling Yui asked if it was worth contacting the research center at all. He said that, after all, you can learn more about the ghost world and supernatural happenings from them than from the forum. He replied that he was not interested in money and only wanted information, in this case regarding the supernatural incident. Bai Yi suggested meeting in person at 12 p.m. in the ghost space. The main character agreed. He stood in the square under the orange evening sky. He thought that every day from midnight to 6 o'clock in the morning, those who had passed the test cycle for beginners could enter the space of a thriller game. Ling Yui thought that this is a public area of the ghost world, which does not belong to people from the real world or anyone from the ghost world, and this spawn does not have any appearance hiding effects. He thought that with the ghost mask, he could still hide his true appearance from people, because it was a high-level Ying artifact. An inscription appeared in front of him, please state your nickname. The main character said, Emperor Fendu, you have a new friend request. Bai Yi invited you to enter her personal space. Do you agree? The main character said yes. He found himself in a space with a table and two chairs, one of which had Bai Yi sitting on it. Ling Yui said with a smile that they had not seen each other for a long time. Bai Yi thought it was strange because he was standing right in front of her and she still couldn't see his face clearly. Opening her mouth, she thought that his methods were incomprehensible because even from her he was able to hide his face. As she poured the tea, she expressed her deep gratitude to him for his willingness to help deal with the supernatural incident in Jiangcheng. The main character sat down on a chair and said that this was nothing for him. He asked her to tell him the details regarding the order. Bai Yi said that they would meet at the Jiangcheng train station tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. She told him to put it on and the right person would meet him. She said they would also provide him with more details. The main character, holding the small triangle in his hand, agreed and thought that it seemed to be the number 9 Investigation Center certification badge. Bai Yi wished him a good trip. Ling Yui again appeared in the square and said that personal space is a convenient thing. He said that in addition to the strategy and forum features, there are other communication functions that he will need to explore at some point. 
a notification appeared in front of him about a new friend request. The main character thought that after Bai Yi cleared up all the doubts about him, he became a celebrity, and the only thing that makes him happy is that he has this ghostly mask hiding his face, otherwise he would never have dared to go out and reveal your identity. He paid attention to the alert. Ling Yui asked if it was Li. He said that it seemed that after awakening her spiritual consciousness through the spiritual soul purification wine, she survived the rookie task and became stronger. He said that he agreed to accept her as a friend. Li, waving her hand, said that they had not seen each other for a long time. She said that, thanks to the bottle of wine he gave her last time, she awakened her spiritual knowledge and spiritual power, and she used all the skills to deal with the smoke ghost and pass the rookie test. The main character said that he saw yesterday on the forum that someone was discussing a player who controls a smoke ghost. He said he never thought it was her. Li smiled awkwardly and said that she still couldn't compare to him. Ling Yui asked how long she had been in the true ghost world. He said that this was the first time he entered it, so he still doesn't know how everything works here. Li said with a smile that she also recently came here, just yesterday, and before that she carefully studied the information on the forum, and her father also acquired valuable information from experienced players. She said that according to them, only those who pass the newbie test can be considered full players in the closed beta testing of the thriller game. She raised her index finger and said that for internal beta players, in addition to opening up the thriller game space itself, a friend and guild system, as well as a scoring system, are being added. Lee said the points can be used to redeem artifacts, such as early mission completion cards or mission hint cards. Mission release card, use this to end a mission early. Fortune card, gives hints for completing the current task. The main character thought that although these functional items do not add buffs to stats, they are still very useful. Lee said that in addition, points can be exchanged for the duration of use of the gym for public training, as well as to create a private, enclosed space. She said that she had already been to the public training hall, and the aura there was richer than in the outside world. She said that it is more effective for cultivation. Lee said that as for personal space, it is not available to beginners and can only be obtained by leveling up and having the required number of points. Ling Yui asked if he could only get points by completing tasks. Lee said yes, and the higher the difficulty of the task, the more points he will receive for completing it. She said that in addition to this, players in the official beta have additional tasks to collect points. Clapping her hands, she said that their previous three tasks should also have been awarded points, and she had 240 points. She told him that he too could check his points information in the dashboard. The main character activated the check and his eyes glowed red. A counter for his points appeared in front of him. Leng Yui opened his eyes in amazement and exclaimed, Points, 150,000 Li asked how many points he had. The main character, smiling nervously, said, not so much. He thought that it looked like he had gone overboard in the third quest, and with that many points, he was most likely the leader in game points in the system. Lee, pointing her finger forward, said that there were channels for earning points in the ghost space. She asked if he could see the two towers. In front of them stood a red and blue tall tower, and she said that one of them was the Tower of Afterlife Spirits, and the other was the Tower of Purgatory. The Tower of Afterlife Spirits consists of 100 levels. Each floor has a different number of ghosts, and the higher you go, the higher the difficulty becomes. After killing all the ghosts on the first floor, you can go to customs and get reward points. Lee said that the Purgatory Tower is the most mysterious, few have challenged it, and she doesn't quite understand what role it plays. The main character thought that both towers were clearly an important component of the ghost space, and he had too little information about the Tower of Purgatory, so it was better, just in case, to wait until his strength was restored, and only then start making plans. He said that he was going to look into the Tower of Afterlife Spirits. Lee nodded and said that with his strength it would not be difficult for him, and she would go with him. They entered the Tower of Afterlife Spirits. The guy, flexing his fists, grinned, said that he was itching after passing the exam for beginners, and he was wondering if he could get into the ranking. Looking at the huge stone plaque, the main character said that there was also a rating here. Four people with completion times ranging from 9 to 15 seconds were visible in the rankings. He said that according to the information on the forum, Baiyi had very quickly promoted to rank 6 Ghost Lord and also had hidden powers, but here she only ranked third. He said there seemed to be a lot more pro players than he thought. Lee, pointing her finger, told him if he wanted to challenge the tower, put his hand on the wall like that guy and mentally say, start the challenge. She asked if he was going to go now. 
she told him to be careful. Leng Yui told her not to worry. Touching the wall, he mentally said, start the challenge. On the wall, shrouded in purple energy, an inscription appeared, Challenger, Emperor Fendu. Current floor, one. Want to enter? Closing his eyes, the main character mentally said, enter. The test has begun. Leng Yui found himself in a magical space on a circular platform. The ghost with a long horn on its forehead appeared from a purple portal behind him. He screamed menacingly, opening his mouth wide. Many ghosts rushed to attack the main character from all sides. He used seven lohu spikes. The spikes, shrouded in blue energy, pierced the bodies of the ghosts. Ling Yui thought, it seems that the ghosts in this tower are not real, and are most likely puppets filled with grievances and ying energy. Throwing the blue balls into space, he asked Zhu Jiang if he could kill them. Zhu Jiang said that this is his specialty. Ling Yui said that he can be useful sometimes. He thought that in between quests he could earn a regular income from this tower. The first floor has been cleared. Travel time, 2.1 seconds. Points received, 100. Want to challenge the next floor? The main character said no and was enveloped in purple energy. He thought that today's experiment in the Tower of Afterlife Spirits was quite enough, and there was no need to rush into further research. Seeing Ling Yui, Li smiled. The main character came out of the purple portal, and she asked how it went. Ling Yui smiled and said that there are only five ghosts on the first floor, and it is too easy. Li asked how long it took him to get through the first floor. The bald guy, pointing his finger, shouted that the rating had changed. An anonymous person appeared in first place in the ranking with a completion time of 2.1 seconds. Looking at the main character, Li said that he got first place. Ling Yui smiled awkwardly and said that he didn't want to be too noticeable, so he remained anonymous. Someone shouted that it was impossible to enter the Tower of Afterlife Spirits. The guy said that judging by the system notification, it looks like maintenance work is coming up. Another guy said this is the first time this has happened. The main character wondered if it was because he killed all the ghost puppets on the first floor. He thought that the game seemed to be tied to the real world of ghosts, since it had such logical rules. He thought about who created this huge system of rules, and why it came to the human world. His balance was 101540000000000. Ling Yui thought about how his system, Sheng Hao and his resurrection were connected. Stepping forward, he thought that one day he would be able to make sense of this strange world. The main character boarded a high-speed train. Folding his arms across his chest and crossing his legs, he thought that compared to the tension and thrill of the 44 train, he still preferred the ease and comfort of the human world. He thought that, unfortunately, the game began to suck in players one by one, and the existence of ghosts began to affect the real world. Ling Yui thought that it wouldn't be long before the world system was rewritten. The phone in his pocket rang. Looking at the screen, he asked, Lee. He thought that the timid girl from the first quest had become so bold. He remembered how she suggested exchanging numbers in order to be in touch more often. The main character picked up the phone, putting the phone to his ear. Li asked if he was going to Zhongcheng. She said that she heard that Section 9 had invited him to investigate a supernatural incident. Ling Yui asked how she knew this. Li said the incident happened at a shopping center owned by her father. She said it was unusual. The main character opened his mouth in amazement. Li said that three years ago, their company's Fuyang Mall had an incident involving the death of an employee. And at that time the mall did not suspend operations because it was an isolated incident, and was immediately reported to the police. She said there was a mass death there the next day, including dozens of employees and customers. Following this, deaths began to occur in the Guangning residential complex, located several kilometers from the shopping center causing panic in Jiangcheng. Li said that it was only when the No. 9 department decided to intervene that the incident was treated as a supernatural phenomenon, and the mall was cordoned off, however, according to news from her father's friends. In fact, when the first incident occurred, at the same time in another part of Jiangcheng another victim appeared. Leng Yui asked if this was true. Li said that according to the evidence collected, the ying energy in both places has a common origin and the method of murder appears to be similar, so it can be assumed that the same ghost did it. She said that for some reason they didn't want her father to go to Section 9, so the case was closed. The main character asked if she wanted to say that strange deaths occurred simultaneously in two different places. Lee said this is the strangest moment. She asked how a ghost could commit two murders in completely different places. Standing at the table, she said that although the case was officially being handled at the county level, she was concerned that the ghost was using unusual methods. She told him not to let his guard down. She said that if he needed anything, he could contact her at any time and she could help him in Zhongcheng. 
The main character thanked her and said that he would call if he needed anything. He thought that this was indeed a very strange case, and all he could do was arrive at the scene and inspect everything. Ling Yui walked out onto the street full of passers-by. He thought that the number 9 department badge would help pinpoint the location. Several people with serious faces appeared in front of him. Lao he asked if he was the Fendu Emperor. He thought that it seemed like he was using an example to hide his identity, and he couldn't see his face. The main character, holding out his hand, said that it was him. He asked if they were from department number 9. Lao he said that his code name is Great River, and he can call him Lao he. The guy in the jacket said to call him Sharp Blade. The girl said her name was Quick Feather. Lao he told the protagonist to quickly get into the car because the situation was urgent. The four of them got into the car and Quick Feather took the wheel. Sharp Blade handed the main character a piece of paper and said that here is all the information about the incident. Ling Yui thought that this was basically everything Lee had told him about, but not a single mention of another simultaneous incident. Lao he said that their department believes that this is related to the death of a hunter who lost control of the ghosts. He asked him if he had any ideas. The main character thought that he did not understand why they did not mention the other incident. He thought that he wouldn't give Lee any trouble. He said that in the ghost world, ghosts must follow certain rules and a chosen pattern of killing people. He asked if they were limited by these rules in this world. Quickfeather said that in their experience, there are rules regarding killing people. The main character said that in just 2 minus 3 days about a hundred murders occurred simultaneously, and at a very long distance. He asked if the killing rate was too high for an insignificant ghost of the evil spirit level. Those present looked at him in amazement when they heard the words about the insignificant level of the evil spirit. Sharp Blade asked whether this number of deaths could be due to the fact that the rules for killing people are easily broken, and the zone of influence is high. Ling Yui said that it was possible, and if it was really that simple, they would figure it out quickly. Looking out the window, he thought that, as far as he knew, in the real world there is not enough yin energy, and ghosts cannot instantly move through areas other than their own. He wondered if, when they were embodied in reality, the ghost's abilities changed. Their car stopped next to a shopping center. The door swung open and people nearby looked at the car. The main character got out of the car and thought that this was the property of the Lee family and the place where the first incident took place. Han Long chuckled and said that he thought that they would not have the courage to come to their own death. The guy with blue hair said that this is a dangerous mission at the district level, so they better go and call for reinforcements. He said to leave it to them. The main character asked who they were. Lao he said that these are local ghost hunters, and some of them belong to the Mad Dragon Club from Jiangcheng and are voicing grievances at the official level. He said that the one who stands out the most is Han Long, who was previously in prison, and after he accidentally became a hunter, he became a big problem. He said that they used some means to participate in the investigation, trying to increase the influence of their club by revealing the incident. Ling Yui thought that the officials had not been notified of the other incident, and it was most likely related to people from the underground world. He said that they had secretly acquired information for their own gain, which was no different from hiding ghosts or killing people. Han Long asked him what he was doing here, because he looked young. He asked if he was going to rise by working for the government. The guy with the long bangs said that such young newcomers are easier to deceive, and he hasn't even reached rank 4. Another guy said the government is no good. The main character turned around and said that the district-level incident was quite dangerous, and he advised them to tell all the information they knew, and then go home and hide. The guy with blue hair said irritably that their boss was a rank 4 hunter with his own ghosts. He slashed with his hand, and Ling Yui dodged with a slight movement. The guy froze in amazement. Han Long spat out his cigarette and said that he seemed confident in his abilities. Leaning down in front of him, he proposed a competition to see who would be the first to deal with the evil spirit. He entered the building, holding up police tape. The guys said that the fools and the government would see their strength. The main character, smiling slightly, said that if they were in such a hurry to die, then he would not interfere with them. He said they were coming too. They went inside. Ling Yui opened the door and purple energy flowed out. He said that Ying energy surges in all directions. Quick Feather asked if that ghost had appeared here. The main character said he doesn't know. He said that the rules for killing people for ghosts remain a mystery, and they need to test it out from their own experience. They turned around in amazement. Lao he asked if a ghost had appeared. Quick Feather exclaimed that they were ahead of them. The main character suggested going inside and taking a look. They saw the hunters looking in shock at a man lying on the ground with a swollen belly. Green foam was coming out of the guy's mouth on the floor. Ling Yui said that this was exactly the same death as described in the file. 
The guy with blue hair turned to his boss in fear. Han Long covered his mouth with his hand. The guy tried to say something, but he wouldn't let him go. The main character thought that this is not the same as quests in a game, where the rules are immediately told. And in this world without ordinary people putting their lives on the line with every step they take, not knowing the rules of killing ghosts, Han Long said that it looks like they won't get anything out of him. The girl said with tears in her eyes that she had seen many deaths, but this was just terrible. The guy, putting his hand on her shoulder, told her not to worry, because since the boss was here, they could kill him. A huge ghost with sharp teeth appeared behind them, reaching out to them. Throwing the spike forward, Ling Yui thought, there he is. The ghost grabbed the guy by the shoulder. He dodged the spike and it flew past, leaving a blue trail behind it. Ling Yui frowned and thought that he was able to dodge. Han Long asked the guy if he was okay. He asked how they called him. The guy's stomach was swollen, his eyes were red and bulging, and fluid came out of his mouth. Looking at this, the main character thought about his stomach. The guy's belly swelled more and more, the veins on it bulged, and he put his hands in his mouth. The contents of his body splashed everywhere. He fell to the floor and the hunters screamed in fear. Touching his face, the main character said that he was dead. Han Long asked if anyone would finally tell him what he did to summon the ghost. The guy with blue hair said he didn't see anything. Lao he asked the main character what he thought. Rubbing his chin, Ling Yui said that it was still impossible to determine just from what he saw. Quick Feather agreed and said that all they saw was the guy tapping the girl on the shoulder and then a ghost appeared. He assumed the taps on the shoulder were calling him. The main character said that they cannot rule it out. He put his hand on Quick Feather's shoulder. Quick Feather thought in amazement that he was going to test it out for himself. The main character put his hand on Sharp Blade's shoulder. He then placed his hand on Lao He's shoulder. Exhaling, he said that the pat on the shoulder could be eliminated. Quick Feather breathed a sigh of relief. Lao He said that this was a very aggressive approach. Ling Yui said that he didn't want them to get hurt, so he took the test himself, because after all, ghosts are nothing to him. Quick Feather thought that he was worthy to be the Emperor of Fendu. Lao He thought that he was able to kill two fierce ghosts single-handedly, so it was no wonder he was so confident. The girl, falling to her knees, asked how this happened. She asked the boss if he said that dealing with this ghost would not be difficult. The guy with blue hair said that their team of six lost two in a matter of seconds and it was dangerous to continue. Another guy asked if there was any way to kill the ghost faster. The girl grabbed Han Long's leg and asked him to help her because she didn't want to die. Han Long swung his leg and angrily told her not to touch her, and they both died next to her. He told her if she wanted to live, think about how it happened. The girl said she really didn't know. Red energy appeared behind Han Long. Turning around, he asked if he had come for him this time. He was enveloped in blue energy and a huge red ghost appeared behind him. The ghost, shrouded in red energy, rushed to attack Han Long, who was surrounded by a blue barrier. The guy with blue hair asked if this was the ghost. The main character said that he also has his own ghost. He said they'll see what happens, but he feels like he can't be saved. The ghost touched his magical barrier with his hand. There was a bright flash of energy and his hand passed through the barrier. The ghost grabbed Han Long by the stomach. Han Long's eyes widened in fear and his teeth clenched. He was already down on all fours. The ghost in front of him disappeared into thin air. Han Long said with tears in his eyes that he did not want to die. The main character closed his eyes and lowered his head. The liquid splashed around the room again. The guy with blue hair exclaimed that the boss was now also dead. Another guy, helping the girl to her feet, said that if he hadn't told them it would be easy here, they wouldn't be here. Sharp Blade asked the protagonist what they would do since these hunters failed. Ling Yui said that he thought he understood his rules of killing. Red energy began to gather behind him. An angry ghost, shrouded in red energy, appeared in the air above him. The main character said that he finally understood why he kills. He threw a spike at the ghost. The thorn pierced the ghost. He disappeared into thin air, leaving a red trail. The guy with blue hair exclaimed that the ghost was dead. Ling Yui said that he was not dead yet, but he scared him away with his attack for a while. Lao He thought in amazement that he had repelled the ghost's attack so easily, and no wonder he wasn't nervous at all from the start. Quick Feather said he understood why he kills. The main character said that from now on women are forbidden to open their mouths. The girls looked at each other questioningly. Ling Yui said that after talking to a girl, the ghost attacks the guy who spoke to her, and they must have already noticed this themselves. The guy with blue hair said that he also spoke to them, but the ghost did not attack him. Ling Yui said that they were just lucky, and after talking with the opposite sex, the ghost attacks the men. He said that this was not an accident, but a pattern. Turning to Sharp Blade, he said that after their boss talked to her, a ghost appeared and killed him. 
Turning to the others, he said that even fate could befall others. The guy suggested that the main ghost was not going on a rampage because of Yu Young's death, and he was deliberately manipulating other ghosts to kill people. The main character asked if this was the same hunter who died in the incident with the rampaging ghost. Lao he said that Yu Young was the third rank hunter who died in the incident. He said they didn't know much about him, but the Mad Dragon Club maintained friendly relations with him. Ling Yui told them to speak up since they knew something about him. The guy smiled nervously and said that they didn't know that much. The main character told them not to pretend, because he had long noticed that they were hiding something. He said that this ghost killed two people in different places, distant from each other at the same time, and they knew everything but promised to hush up the matter and did not inform the police. Lao He and Quickfeather thought that they had not received information that different people were killed at the same time in different places. Ling Yui said that he had long ago realized that this incident was not so simple, and he was afraid that these scoundrels would take revenge on the person who resorted to his help, so he did not tell them about it before. The guy said that it was an order from Han Long and they had no choice. The main character said that he is now dead. He told them to tell him all the information they had because it was important to everyone. The blue hair guy said that Han Long claimed that his ghost was so strong that no one can defeat him, and this turned out to be a lie, and he is not so invincible. He said that this ghost could easily resist him. The guy with long hair agreed with him and said that Yu Young's strength among their guild members was considered one of the best. He said that even though he was a third rank, even Han Long did not dare to provoke him. He said that his character was also good. He did not create problems and carried out the tasks assigned to him properly. The guy with blue hair said that he has a girlfriend. They have been dating for about four years, and she is quite beautiful. The main character, thoughtfully rubbing his chin, asked if this had anything to do with the rule according to which it is forbidden to talk to the opposite sex. The guy, rubbing his head, said that it was possible, and they were speculating indiscriminately. He said that the last time they saw Yu Young, he was in a bad mood, and later they heard rumors that his girlfriend could not stand what he was doing, broke up with him and left with some man to another city. Wow he asked, Jen Mei. The guy said that's her name and she seems to work at Fian Mall. Ling Yui remembered the photo of a woman with a swollen belly. He said that she was the first victim of that incident. Quick Feather, rubbing the back of his head, said that he was willing to bet that Yu Young died before his girlfriend. Lao he told them not to be mistaken, because he could put himself in suspended animation since they know that he is an extraordinary rank 3 hunter, and now they need to be more vigilant, because if he deliberately faked his death, it means that they have dealing with a third rank hunter who is proficient in ghost control techniques. They looked at him in amazement, and he said that it was possible that he was hiding his power. Ling Yui said it was interesting. The light in the room, which had been working properly all this time, suddenly went out. They found themselves in darkness, surrounded by a purple aura. The main character turned around and said to be careful, because now they would be dealing with a not fully formed ghostly creature. Lao he asked, another ghost. He asked if he was not the most ordinary, and if there was some ying artifact that would erase him from the earth once and for all. The main character said no because too many people died here and because of this the concentration of ying is too high. He said that this mall is a paradise for the power of this ghost, and he took this opportunity to create the perfect ghost battlefield for himself. He told everyone not to run away and come to him. Everyone had their backs to him, gathered around him. Numerous footsteps were heard. Quick Feather asked what this ghost was going to do. A little girl in a white dress was running down the corridor. With tears in her eyes, she frightenedly called for help. She asked her father if he wanted to see her again. The guy with blue hair raised his hands in fear and said that he was not her father. The girl stamped her foot and stopped. Liquid ran down her face and she laughed with an evil grimace on her face. The main character shouted that this was the corpse of a girl who was controlled by a ghost, and her goal was to persuade people to talk to herself. The guy with long hair cursed and said that this ghost is very cunning. Quick Feather said that if it weren't for Emperor Fendu's reminder, he might have had to answer her too. Red energy gathered around the guy with blue hair who turned around in fear. Clutching his head and falling to his knees, he asked if he would really die like that. Ling Yui stood behind him and said that he would not let him die. The ghost appeared in front of them, and the main character stood in front of him, straightened up. Opening his mouth, the ghost let out an enraged roar. Ling Yui threw one of the spikes at him. The thorn pierced the ghost and the protagonist said that once he touched this fierce ghost, he would immediately dissolve in fear and run away. Pouring the blue liquid onto the ghost's hand, he shouted that his tricks wouldn't work anymore. The ghost stepped back and disappeared into thin air. The guy with blue hair said with tears in his eyes that he survived. 
they exclaimed that they heard a lot of footsteps. The main character, turning around, said that they should not react to any words, and talking with the dead of the opposite sex also triggers the murder mechanism. A little girl, half of her face missing, exposing her skull, asked Quickfeather to help her, calling him daddy. Clinging to him, she dropped him to the floor and asked why he saved him and she didn't. Pursing his lips, Quickfeather mentally asked the protagonist to come up with a way, because he relies on him. A pulse of purple energy struck around Ling Yui, sending the ghosts flying. He thought that he assumed that all the corpses in the mall must have been collected by the police. He wondered where they were all here from. Closing his eyes, the protagonist thought that the indicator liquid he used also showed that this ghost was circulating around the mall, but there was no entity in it, therefore, there was no way for him to directly attack him. Opening his eyes, he thought that he should let it manifest again, and then kill it with one blow. A little girl with eyes bulging in different directions appeared in front of him and called him daddy. Ling Yui, dodging, said that he would like such a daughter. Red energy began to gather behind him. The guy with long hair exclaimed why he reacted to her words. Quickfeather thought he did this on purpose to attract the ghost. The ghost that appeared behind the main character rushed to attack. Ling Yui threw a ribbon shrouded in purple energy forward. The ribbon enveloped the ghost like a cocoon. While he shouted, he did it. The ghost fell to the floor in front of the main character. Quickfeather exclaimed that the emperor was very strong. The guy with blue hair asked about calling him emperor. Quickfeather said that this is indeed Emperor Fendu. The guy with blue hair asked that this is really the person that the whole forum is constantly talking about. The guy with long hair exclaimed joyfully. The girl said that then it was no wonder that he always had such a calm expression on his face and took the initiative to test the ghost. She said that if this is Emperor Fendu, all this is not surprising. The guy with long hair said that he felt ashamed that they had been rude to him recently. Lao he asked the main character if it was all over. Turning around, Ling Yui said that before he could exterminate this ghost, he must first torture it. He told the ghost not to resist, he still wouldn't be able to dispel the entity and escape. He said that the thing that suppresses him is the first class Ying artifact, the cursed pharaoh's headband. The ghost thought that this person has many mid and high level Ying artifacts at his disposal and he should be able to control the ghost, which means this guy is at least a fifth-rank hunter. He wondered where someone so strong came from here. A thorn appeared in the main character's hand and he said to tell him where Yu Young is. The ghost asked what he said. He thought that he was bound by a contract, and as soon as Yu Young found out about everything, he would get him out of here and destroy this guy. The main character told him not to pretend like he doesn't know anything because he has no way to resist and he won't be able to protect his body because that nail alone will be enough to make his soul suffer furiously. A wad of money appeared above his hand. Ling Yui said that if he reported his whereabouts, he would return to the ghost world, and all this money would belong to him. He said he could buy himself a ghost yacht or something like that. Sharp Blade said he caught the ghost alive, intimidated him, and is now trying to bribe him. The girl exclaimed that people like Emperor Fendu have true power. The main character thought that there is no friendship between the hunter and the ghosts, but there is subordination, and the reason for this is the contract. He thought that, in theory, if the contract was of low rank, he could get the information he needed from this ghost. The ghost looked intently at the wad of money. He turned around in fear, and his body began to crumble into red particles. Ling Yui thought that he was bound by the pharaoh's bandage and nothing should happen to him. Looking at the ghost, he thought that it was disappearing. Quickfeather asked the main character what happened. The main character said that it seems that Hunter Yu Young remembered his subordinate ghost. His mouth widened. He thought that if a hunter remembers his ghosts, they almost instantly move into ghostly space, and this ghost simply slowly dissipated. Lao he asked what was going on here. Ling Yui said that the bandage was properly secured, and what happened just now had something to do with Yu Young. Quickfeather asked about how this ghost has the ability to move to another place in an instant, despite being imprisoned by a bandage. He said it was not surprising that he could kill people while being in two places at once. Sharp Blade said that it looks like Yu Young is still alive. The main character asked if they were sure that this ghost was under Yu Young. The guy with long hair scratched the back of his head and said that the Yu Young ghost's attack is that it touches people and makes people's internal organs swell and kill them. But as far as he remembers, he was only able to control evil spirits, and this was on the level of ferocious. The main character asked if they brought information from Center Number 9. Sharp Blade said yes. Looking at the papers, Ling Yui thought about the death of the hunter, Fian Mall, Guangning community, committing crimes in two places at the same time. The corpse that appeared inexplicably, the fact that the evil ghost is becoming fierce, and the dissipation of Ying Kai. 
He thought that this was not a dissipation of Ying Kai, but a transfer, and this feeling was somewhat similar to how he used the top rank contract to share his Ying power with them. Frowning, he sighed. Sharp Blade, taking the papers from his hands, asked what he thought about it. The main character said that he has a bold guess, and perhaps the key to the solution is Yu Young's death. Quick Feather asked if he meant that Yu Young could have died some other, weirder death. Ling Yui said that he thought that Yu Young was indeed dead, but he was resurrected. Quick Feather asked what this meant. The main character said that Yu Young turned into a ghost. Everyone exclaimed in amazement. The main character said that this is the most reasonable explanation, so he became an evil ghost whose original contract is to have the second power of Ying. But at the same time he somehow has the power of a ferocious ghost. As a ghost, Yu Young's obsession has formed a deadly rule against speaking with the opposite sex. At the same time, he can still control contract ghosts and force them to obey him. Subsequently, Yu Young and the contract ghost split up and killed Zhang Mei, and the target of deception at the same time. Then Yu Young went to the Guangning community while the ghost remained in the shopping mall. They increased their strength by constantly killing people. Pointing his finger at the little girl lying on the floor, Ling Yui said that if he guessed correctly, the reason for the appearance of these corpses is a contract ghost that Yu Young sent to this shopping center to hide and kill people, increasing the strength of both, and Yu Young was committing crimes at this time. Lao He, turning away, said that his words made sense, but before that there was not a single case known of a hunter becoming a ghost after death. Quick Feather said that, moreover, it was still a little strange that Yu Young and his ghosts could use the power of Ying in two places at the same time, and even summon their subordinate from another place. The main character said that they are right, but he is afraid that Yu Young might still be hiding so many secrets. Quick Feather asked what they should do now since they couldn't let these two make them run after one thing or another. He added that splitting up to fight in two places at once was risky. Now he said that if they were dealing with two ferocious ghosts in different places, he would call for reinforcements. Ling Yui said that while they wait for reinforcements, Yu Young will use this time to continue committing crimes and strengthening his forces. Closing his eyes, he activated the indicator liquid. Pointing his finger forward, he said that this ghost had been teleported to the Guangning community. Now he said that they would go there right away. Sharp Blade and Quick Feather obeyed. The guy with blue hair asked if they would leave this shopping center empty and unguarded. The main character said that the ghost should not return here in the near future, since he will be here, and he considers him dangerous. He said to send ordinary people here to block all the entrances to Fian Mall. Frowning, he said that they were going to Guangning community to find out the source of the ghost. He told them to stay here because this matter no longer concerned them. The guy with long hair wanted to say something and Ling Yui said that they themselves understood that this incident was very dangerous. He told them not to risk their lives needlessly unless they wanted to die. Bowing, he said that they understood everything, and they would return immediately. He thanked them for saving their lives. The girl said that they would never forget his great virtue. The car arrived at Guangning community. The main character said that the ghost that was rampaging in the shopping center went here. Kneeling down on one knee, he said that this ghost was definitely around here somewhere. He told the others to evacuate the people as soon as possible while he dealt with the ghost. They ran away in different directions. The main character ran and his eyes glowed red. Suddenly he stopped abruptly. There were two ghosts standing on the wires above his head. Ling Yui asked one of them if he was Yu Young. Yu Young, clenching his fist, told him not to think that dealing with his subordinate in the mall would help him deal with him. He said that after they joined forces, a rank 4 or 5 hunter would not be able to handle them. The main character lowered his head with an ominous smile. Streams of yellow energy swirled above his hand, and he mentally told Zhu Jiang to lend him his power. With his arms spread out to the sides, enveloped in a yellow aura, he asked how he felt about this. Yu Yang said that he can still do something, but if they want to escape, he won't be able to stop them. Ling Yui wondered if he was going to escape. He thought how he was not ashamed to say such cowardly things in such an arrogant tone. He asked why he wanted to back down and if he had become a coward after his girlfriend left him. Yu Young, cursing angrily, asked what he said. The main character said that he heard that his girlfriend left him because he became a hunter. He asked if his new profession interfered with their relationship in any way. Yu Young said that he became a hunter, but everything she did was for her sake, and she didn't value anything at all. He shouted that not only was she constantly cheating on him, but she had also joined forces with someone to poison him. Smirking. He said that, unfortunately, they were dead and would never know that he had gained immortality. The main character said that when he was alive, he was only a third-rank hunter, and without a protective aura, he was not much different from ordinary people. 
He asked if he thought he had anything to brag about to his deceased abusers. A ghost appeared behind Yu Young, and he shouted that at least he was alive, and they were dead. He said that his contract is different from his because his is a regular one and his is a double-sided one because he is also a ghost. He said that he shares his ying with the ghost, and he shares his power with him, and this means that even when he dies, he will survive and just turn into this ghost. Clenching his fist, Yu Young said with a grin that he should thank that girl, because if it weren't for her, there would be no resentment lurking in his heart. He said that then he would not have had the ying power surge, and he would not have the power of a ferocious ghost. Ling Yui, rubbing his chin, asked what this two-way contract was, and whether he came up with it himself. He asked that he was probably somehow connected with secret forces in the world of ghosts. Yu Young asked if he was interested. He said that he wouldn't tell him anything and he was just the lucky one who managed to get directly to him. But there was no way he could handle him. He said that he was chosen by the most powerful organization in the truly terrifying ghost world. The main character asked if he was dealing with the organization of the ghost world. Yu Young said that these powerful ghosts liked his talent and made a two-way contract to destroy people. He said that in this world he works for them, collects the information they need and receives powerful power. Ling Yui said that, in other words, he is a person who conspired with the ghosts to enslave the human world. Yu Young asked with a grin, so what? He said that the power he has cannot be bought with money. He asked why he needed women if he had power. He said that this girl never understood him, but it is worth giving her credit, because she was the first to notice strangeness in his behavior and that he began to look more like a ghost. He said she got scared and decided to poison him. Yu Young said that she had a real snake heart, and after he finally became a ghost, he killed her first, and then her new boyfriend, and if not for his voluptuous speeches, Zhang Mei would not have left him for him. He shouted that he also deserved to die, and he killed him. Emitting energy, he said that this is why he wants to kill all the guys who communicate with girls, because all people are the same. He shouted that they like the girl and didn't even care that she had a boyfriend. He laughed evilly. The main character said that he initially had some sympathy for him, thinking that they were similar, but he was wrong, and he is the most disgusting scoundrel. He said that the very fact that he reached this point of no return was his fault. Yu Young, grinning, asked if he was sure that he knew his future fate. He said that he would deal with the last task and go to the world of ghosts, where he would live carefree. Turning around, he said that he probably thought that the organization behind him would leave him alone. He said that he would return to the ghost world and report to the third master so that he would be put on the wanted list. He said that he was even willing to provide several hundred and even thousands of ritual money to put a reward on his head, and he would definitely die. A purple magic circle appeared in front of Ling Yui, and he said that he had not let it go, and even though he mentioned some secrets in passing, the interrogation was not over yet. Yu Young jumped up and shouted that he couldn't stop him, and even if he used a first-class Ying artifact, he wouldn't be able to hold off the two of them at the same time. He used his innate talent, teleportation in two directions. He said he could run as far as he wanted. The main character took out playing cards from the portal. Throwing down the playing cards, he said that he had better stay and play cards with him. He used to set new rules for ghosts. Yu Young and his ghost found themselves surrounded by purple energy and playing cards. He asked what was going on since his two-way teleportation had failed. He shouted that this was impossible. A scream was heard above residential buildings. Yu Young, falling to the ground, asked what he had done. Ling Yui said that he had already told him that he just wanted to play cards with him, and he couldn't leave until they finished the game. Yu Young thought that he knows that his Ying power can be blocked by some artifacts, but he doesn't even feel any aura from these cards. He wondered what kind of power this was. The main character thought that this was the rule of poker cards, and if an opponent was given an invitation to play, he was not allowed to refuse and run away, and this rule took effect immediately. He thought that, unlike those three ghosts on the train, the poker cards were now connected to him, so he put all his power into their action. The ghost lay on the ground, and Yu Young exclaimed that he remembered these cards. He asked about this being a high-grade Ying artifact. Clutching his head, he asked how this could happen, and whether he meant to say that he had more connections in the ghost world than he did. The main character, putting his foot on the ghost's face, said that this is not something he should worry about now and he better think about how he will play cards with him. Yu Young exhaled and asked if this was a simple game of cards and if he was a child. He said that he was once a casino card master. He asked what the rules of the game were. The main character said that the rules are the same as in poker and he bets a thousand ritual money. Yu Young asked if that was too much. Ling Yui asked if he didn't say himself that he wanted to offer the third master a thousand ritual money as a reward for his head. 
but now he says that this is a lot for him. Smirking evilly, he said that if he lacked ritual money, he could supply the artifacts and materials to Ying. Yu Young bowed his head and thought that he should accept the rules. Between them, a wooden board appeared on the ghost's head. The main character shuffled the deck of cards. Then he began to deal the cards very quickly. Yu Young, taking the cards in his hands, thought that he did not seem to be cheating. He wondered if he was serious about playing cards with him. Laughing, he said that his Ying artifact seemed to have many limitations. Slamming his hand on the table, he said that it would not be difficult for him to defeat him. Ling Yui, showing him three aces, told him to open up since he was so confident. Yu Young looked at the cards in his hand in shock. Smirking nervously, he wondered what kind of spoiled cards these were. Frowning, he asked if he was cheating. The main character asked if he had any reason to cheat. Yu Young wondered why he was so tough and was he really cheating. Putting the money in his hand, he told him not to be proud of himself and he was just unlucky. He said that he would get even now. The main character, while distributing the cards, wondered with a grin if he had problems with his head and if he understood that this was a high-class artifact. He wondered why he treated these cards as ordinary ones. Grabbing the cards, Yu Young thought that he could not help but feel that the Ying power emanating from these cards was too strong. And if this was true, then high-level Ying artifacts were unpredictable. He asked in shock why he had terrible cards again. There were very low-value cards in his hands. Throwing the cards on the table, he shouted that there was something wrong with these cards. Ling Yui, shrouded in an ominous aura, asked if he wanted to die. He said that if he didn't follow the rules, he would die a bad death. Yu Young, sweating nervously, thought that this was a very powerful compulsion. Putting the money in the main character's hand, he told him to take it. Grabbing a deck of cards, he said that something was wrong here, and he had never been so unlucky. He said to let him deal the cards. Ling Yui told him to give it away if he wanted. Taking the cards in his hands, Yu Young again felt the strange Ying energy from them. The main character calmly looked at his cards, surrounded by a whirlwind of purple energy. Yu Young asked if he uses the power of Ying to somehow influence the cards. Ling Yui said that he does not use the power of Ying. He asked why he would cheat. He said that this deck just deals itself out like that. He said that some are lucky and some are not, and he does not need to be upset, but just wait in the wings. Yu Young, putting the money on the table, shouted to him to take the money, but not to rejoice ahead of time. He said that he would now combine his power with the contract ghost, and he would be in trouble. Looking under the table, he shouted to the ghost to give him his Ying power. The ghost agreed. Yu Young gritted his teeth, enveloped in a red aura. The main character looked at him with a confident grin. Yu Young looked at him in horror, sweating nervously. Ling Yui looked like a huge demon in his eyes. He thought that he couldn't even compete with him. The main character thought that Zhu Jiang lent him his Ying power, and he, with the help of his accomplice, thinks that he can somehow defeat him. He thought it was funny. He showed three aces. Yu Young showed his cards and said that he lost again. Ling Yui asked if he had run out of money. He said he could use some of his belongings to pay off his gambling debt. Yu Young thought that when he was alive, he was only a third-rank hunter. He wondered if he seriously thought that he had something worth a thousand ritual money. He thought that he could deal with this situation if he could come up with some way to confirm his identity. Smirking, Yu Young reached into his inner pocket and said that maybe if he saw this thing, he would stop acting so arrogant. Ling Yui looked at him with his mouth wide open. Yu Young showed the gold badge with a wide smile. The main character wondered why the style of this icon was so similar to his. He thought that this badge seemed to belong to the same organization he was in. But it was very different because he had the badge of a ghost lord. He told Baiju to look at the badge and tell him if it looked familiar. Baiju swore that this badge was an ID card belonging to a powerful organization in the ghost world. She said that this organization is the third most powerful of all organizations, and two of its directors occupy seats next to the advisors of the ghost world. Yu Young stood with his arms folded on his chest, and she said that this man is like a gardener in a big mansion, and although the fourth level worker is a little higher than the gardener, he still has no prospects, and one of the managers he will never become. The main character indifferently threw the badge on the table and thought that the powerful organization from the ghostly world, which he kept talking about, was just a third-rate office, the directors of which were at the beck and call of advisors. He thought that this was not even a third-rate office, these were literally lackeys of the advisors of the ghost world. Yu Young said that if he knows even a little about the ghost world, then he should know about the other side organization. He told him if he didn't want to become their enemy, let him go now. Folding his arms across his chest, he said that life was not easy for everyone right now, and he did not need to walk an even more difficult path alone. He said that if he let him go, he would treat today's incident as if it never happened. 
Ling Yui said with a smile that he also has a badge, but it is a little different. He showed his red badge. Yu Young, his mouth wide open in shock, asked about the fact that this is the badge of the Overlord, and he is one of the advisors. The main character said that this is true, and he is only an employee of the organization subordinate to him, and he will never object if he wants to kill him. Yu Young fell to his knees and thought that if the advisor gave an order, the entire organization would start hunting him. Slapping himself on the cheek, he asked for forgiveness and said that he was wrong and deserved to die. He asked for his life to be spared. He said that although he is an ordinary worker, he has a lot of connections and can sway many ghosts to their side. He said that he had information, and if they needed anything, he could be useful and would tell him everything. The main character said that he still doesn't seem to realize the situation he's in. He asked why he believed that he, a level 4 employee, had the right to offer his conditions to the director like this. He said that he could calmly kill a scoundrel like him without any consequences. Ling Yui asked if he thought he would just let him go, a ghost that had taken hundreds of lives in his country. He picked up a deck of playing cards. With an ominous grin, he suggested continuing to play cards. A yellow car and two green ones met on the road. People got out of their cars. A man in a business suit with a neat beard said they had read their report and it was clearly not a simple incident. He said, okay, if they were dealing with only two fierce ghosts, but one of them is a former hunter, which means he is very familiar with their regime and methods. Wow, he said that he was right, so he could only appeal to the top. Quickfeather thought that senior hunters from other provinces had been called together to form an elite team to take control of the situation. The man told them to be careful because the ghost was in front. He told everyone not to hold back and use all their strongest moves. They ran, turning the corner. They opened their mouths in shock when they saw the main character, and Yu Young playing poker on a table that stood on the head of a huge ghost. The man asked what was going on here. He asked if this was Emperor Fendu. Wow, he said that he really is him. Quick Feather asked why he was playing cards with this ghost. Looking at the cards in Yu Young's hand, the man said that the combinations in his hands were simply terrible, and there was a feeling of terrifying power next to him. He said they couldn't handle these ghosts. Turning to Lao He, he asked where this poker deck came from. Lao He said that he doesn't know, and he dares to guess that it is an artifact of Emperor Fendu. Quick Feather asked what they should do now. The man said that they could only wait because Emperor Fendu's Ying artifact was too strong and they had no way to interfere with them. 